Welcome to Broad Ideas. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hey. 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 Guys, we have a very special person. London Thor, hello, is with us today. Yay. Olivia has known her since she was a little girl. Little tot. Right? Yeah. Um, she's a singer, songwriter, she's an actress. She's also on that show Gen V. The boy spinoff. Right? Yep. Well, before we get London on in here, everybody, don't forget to check us out on YouTube. Come on, <laughs> Rob. 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 I want you to watch the post so you understand why I'm wearing Rachel's sweater right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And stay, stick around for the post with the three of us. All right. Let's have London. To t- London, you are so fucking <laughs> cute and precious and I just want to like put you in my pocket forever and ever. Uh, yep. Yeah. Obviously, Olivia and you guys are very close and have known each other for a very long time. So why don't you let everyone know how that came to be? That came to be (laughs) because I've known you since you were a little girl. Like Mm -hmm. I remember when you and Ace would walk into the theater. So London's parents were my acting teachers. Her mom is still my acting teacher and acting coach. And I remember when I first saw you and your brother walk into the theater, I was like, what are they? They were like these <laughs> little unicorns. They were the cutest things I'd ever seen. I'm not even <laughs> you were, kidding. You were little. It's tiny. Yeah. Because that, I think I started studying with them like 20 years ago. So you were probably like five or six years old. Either six or seven. We don't know. Either wow. six or seven because we, we forgot how old you are. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh my yeah. goodness. So you were younger than Elliot is now. Aww. Yeah. So I've known London that long. Mm-hmm. And then we've also had the pleasure of being in class together and studying and working um, with your incredible mother, Alice Carter. And then it came to be that even London was babysitting for my kids. Aww. I know. Why does that make me it makes me want to oh cry? God, it, you guys. Because in it, I was thinking wait, about it the other oh. day when I was walking the dogs. I was like, yeah, I can't. Elliot's oh. yeah. It makes me cry. You are crying, but that's what crying. we do here. We we cry. To cry. It, like, um, as soon as you brought up that I was younger than Elliot, I was like, all right. Oh. <laughs> We're gonna start by crying. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that's what we do. But why it is also so tender is because when London started babysitting for us. It was, I reached out when we were in the hospital with Shepard. Shepard, and we didn't know. I can't. It was so hard. It was oh my so God. hard. It was, so nice. it was really hard. And she came in there and was like, like, she would just look at me and be like, I got Elliot. And like, she came in. He's my buddy. Yeah. Oh my God, I love him so much. I love him so much. He's my buddy. Yeah. And she I just know, that was took such him. A, that was such a weird, like, yeah. Bubble of time that didn't feel real. It was no. so it was yeah. twilight zone. traumatic. <sighs> but like your presence in my home and with my kid and just being like, okay, he's taken care of. Like she he was she would bring him to the house with Ace and her brother oh and her mom and like everyone would just like love up the on little, Elliot. The and Elliot like, burrito, we'd wrap him in a little burrito <laughs> and Ace Aww. would carry him around the house and build pillow forts. And I know I was thinking about the um, the zoo trip that we took and the beach trip that I when I took him to Topanga Beach yeah was the best that was the best trip he still talks about that it. was the best trip oh my god was he, it just the two of you yeah I took him down to the beach because he wanted to go to the beach <laughs> and he he was in his like toddler his pushing boundaries stage yeah hard still in it <laughs> still in it <laughs> like hard and I remember sitting there and I was setting everything up. And he's standing there looking at the beach. And I was like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. You're not going to walk away. We're going to stay together. He's looking at the beach and he just starts to walk away. I was like, all right. So here's why you're not going to walk away. And I explained why he shouldn't walk away. Starts to walk away. And I sat there. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to see how far he goes. <laughs> see how far he's going to go. He did not stop. <laughs> I had to get up and go get him. As I was like, I can still see him. So I'm going to see how far he's going to go and push this. And I was like, I'm going to go get him. He's never he's coming walking back. walking to the ocean. <laughs> like, oh my God. He still does that. 
I love it. He loves we found fish a, brown We found a sea one. slug. Mm-hmm. Remember, we found the yes. big sea slug in the rock. I think that's his biggest imprint of the beach. The sea slug? The sea slug and that day. Yeah. Like that specific day is like what made the beach mean something. To oh my God. I, know. I love it. Oh, he's the God. best. He's the best. He's it was best. cute last night. I was trying to find a show for Shepherd and. It was like, you know how they do like the recently watched or mm. whatever. And it was Gen V and you were on the cover. Mm. And I was like, Shepard, who's that? And he went, my friend. Aww. And I was like, that's your friend. <laughs> he is a trip. He I, is so no. adorable. <laughs> it's a trip. God. So London, you know, I hate to say the word making it because I don't like that term mm. very much. Like. I think it's, it sucks for everyone who's not on a show or, you know, there's mm. people making it in so many different ways that might not have that level of yeah. success yet, but I'm going to use it for this because London making it and getting a television show is like, there's very few people in this world that I'm like, if it could happen for anyone, Aww. please let it be this person. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's the truth. Thank you. And you know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> so cool though. So you but you grew up. So your parents were acting teachers. You grew up around it. Mm-hmm. Did you always know you wanted to do it? Yes and no. Yes, I grew up in the studio. Like I was there every day. Every show that went on, I would sit up. Our old theater had this balcony area and I'd sit up there and just watch through the little yes. thingies. Um and I loved it. I loved it so much. But I think, I mean, the immediate thing was like, I want to be like an animal. It was a crocodile hunter. I want to be a crocodile. <laughs> I wanted to be Steve Irwin. Um, and then I did want to act. And my parents were like, no, mm-hmm. we're going to do other stuff. We're going to do everything other than acting. It took a long time to convince them. It took a really long time. But then they gave in. They had me meet with a, a very famous casting director that was a friend of theirs who was notoriously intense, mm-hmm. I guess you would say. No. She was a lot. She is a lot. Fantastic. Amazing cast. Like, legendary. But just straightforward. Mm-hmm. And they had me meet with her when I was, like, 12. Mm. And they're like, just talk to her. And, uh, you know, I thought it was, I didn't know what it was. They put me in a room with her. I hadn't, we weren't friends. I didn't know her. I knew of her. And she basically interrogated me about acting for an hour. Interrogated you? Yeah. She's like, why, what? why do you want to do this? <laughs> why like do you want to do this? 12. I'm like, well, listen. And I told her what I wanted and we talked. And that she gave the all clear of like, she's fine. You can, oh, yeah. you can, she'll be okay. Oh, wow. Well, you're a really gifted actor. Thank like, you. it's true. She's really fucking talented, always has mm. been. Like, there's never been a doubt. I've always been like, that's going to happen, you know? And right. she also has the voice of an angel. I know. She always yeah. talks about your singing voice. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I know it's a lot of compliments. but It's it, a lot. It we're is. Gonna it's gonna, a lot. Gonna, we're going to talk. It's, we're going to like pull your hair too. No, yeah. <laughs> this is good. This is good practice. I'm working on going, thank, thank you, you. And then not being like, ugh. It's so hard to do. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard to accept compliments. Uh, thank you. Yeah. It's... It's been a wild time, but I did want to, once I decided I wanted to act, I was, that's what I want to do. Like I've had a big revelation with music lately of like, I love to sing. Mm -hmm. I love singing. Listening to Katie talk. That was when I like, listening to Katie Stevens interview with you guys, I was like, okay, this is ringing so true to me of like, yeah, I, I wanted to split my attention 50, 50. I thought that'd be okay. Mm. And it is okay at a certain point. I'm fully in the thought process now of like, I can do whatever I think I can do. I can do. I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't love singing the way I like acting. What's the difference for you? The industry is a big difference. I don't mm -hmm. love the music industry. I don't find it interesting. I don't find it very exciting. Mm -hmm. Right. I love to perform music. I love to write music. I love recording. I just don't get the same feeling that I do when I'm on set. Do you think it's because, do you think it's because it's not as collaborative? Like, do you enjoy that kind of? No, because I don't particularly like other people. (laughs) (laughs) I get it. Speak on that, Rachel. I don't get it. 
<laughs> That's no, I because if anything, it's more collaborative and less inclusive. I feel like mm. I feel like acting is more universal in a weird way. Because I know music yeah. is supposed to be more, it's, it is, you know, it's a universal language. But I don't know. I, I, maybe I haven't worked with the right people in music. I just don't feel ever like it's a community at all. I don't feel like, I feel like it's just hounding. Right. Especially working with some DJs and stuff. It's just, it's not very, they have, it can mean one thing to them and one thing to me. Mm. And it's really hard to find middle ground on that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when you're watching a movie and you interpret it in a different way, but the product's done. Right. right. This is happening when the product is it's being made. Right. You're and you're both on like, different. yeah. And then it's never really a collaboration. Well, for me. Until yeah. you act and maybe your character sings. See, that's what I want. Like, yeah. I want to do Broadway. I want to do stuff that's yeah. oh my God, the Broadway. marriage of both worlds. Like, that's I want to awesome. do that. Yeah. And then I'll sing too. I like singing. But I want to hear you sing. Passion. I'm like, can you can you sing? I played you. I've she can she. I will fucking embarrass her right now. Right. She literally has the voice of an angel. <laughs> Let me see. We gotta do singing lessons. Oh my god, are you in on the singing lesson thing, dude? Her? Do you She's know that Jeff's it. bought them for me every year? That's what his present to her every. I can't sing. Birthday. Yes, you can. What's your favorite song that you've made? <sighs> <laughs> What's the one that I used to like? I want to see you're on a swing. Oh, promise from when I was like yes. 15. Yes. 15. Let's just do that because it's not as embarrassing because you were only 15. Okay. We're just going to give you a little taste. I'm 26. I just remembered. Let's see. <laughs> oh, is that not it? I don't know what this is. Is this the live? This is like the live version of it. It's fine. It's, it's fine. a video, no? Yeah, it's live. Oh my god. No. Just crying. I'll make it stop. I can't make it stop. So I would always listen every time. Incredible. No, no matter what. Thank you. you cry when you hear London. It's like oh. a thing. It's like a. Yeah. You have yeah. that. You that have was that thing. a thing for a while. That was a, the crying thing. Well, because mom, crying- mom was so <laughs> supportive of it. And my mom's always been supportive of everything I've done. But music, she really helped me a lot with. Because it wasn't in her wheelhouse. Acting was in her wheelhouse. And she didn't want to intrude in that as much as she felt like she could help with music. Mm. Mm. Like acting, I always feel like she was very helpful, but not in the way that she was with music. I wonder what that is. Yeah. I think it's just knowing that it's a harder, it's not as clear of a path. Like acting is so, you know, I think it takes clear. No, no, no. Music is a clear path. Oh, like, there's I clear acting, steps. Of, I was like, like, it is. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know about it. It's, so, <laughs> it's so easy. Um, <laughs> but, but there's like a you know music. She didn't. She didn't know as much about. So she could be like, okay, what can I do? Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can help her find a recording space, and I can help right. her find an engineer and mm-hmm. all this stuff. And she pushed me to write my music, which I did not want to do. <laughs> and now I'm so happy that I do it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Does she coach you, like, still Mm -hmm. acting-wise? Do you Mm -hmm. go to her? Yeah. Yeah. Still in class twice a week. Oh, you're in class twice Mm -hmm. a week? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then she was there. Yeah. (laughs) What's that like? (laughs) (laughs) She coached me on every, not every episode of the show, but Mm -hmm. on the hard episodes and the stuff that I had questions about, she was always there. And, yeah, she's great. I mean, she's. I love hearing any successful actor who still exercises all of it because I think it's important and obviously oh, everyone's yeah. different and things work differently for people but I think that's really I mean you have the resource like it's your yeah, mother it'd be silly to not use it yeah it's, yeah it's a muscle you have to you have to exercise it I feel like yeah and so the show that you're on mm-hmm. let's talk about it a little bit. I know I want to hear what you thought about it 
Oh my God. Well, first of all, the first like opening scene, I'm like texting her. I'm like, you dude, <laughs> it's, in, it's really gory. Yeah. It's really intense. Yeah. It's really something that once my children are old enough would be obsessed with. <laughs> yeah. Jeff too. Um, once he's old enough. Once, <laughs> once he's, he's old enough. Enough. Once he's there. <laughs> oh my God. What? We have to tell that story. Remember? What? Poor fucking London. Oh gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lordy. <laughs> Your son. <laughs> Elliot? Yeah, Your child. <laughs> she called me one day and she was like, Olivia, we need to talk. And I was like, what is going on? And she's like, I just want to be the one to tell you this because I don't want him talking about this at school. If it's not like a thing, like we just need to have a conversation. I'm like what, what, what? Elliot decided to tell London that Jeff hits him. <laughs> Oh, I remember this. Jeff has never hit. Elliot. He's never touched him. He's no, never, no, never in a million years. But we had to have that conversation, and poor London had to like tell me. Oh my god! I but you handled it, for a it while. really well. You handled it perfectly. Well, because I didn't want you to think like that. I was. <laughs> I thought that was a thing. But how responsible of you, It was though. really well, adult yeah. of her to yeah. be like, hey, there's this thing that we You're need to have so a conversation mature. about. Thank your age. Thanks. Like, incredibly. Yeah, the last thing I want is Elliot to go to. And it turned out to be something that made a lot of sense in Elliot's little brain of like what, at the time, when the age that he was at with pushing yeah. boundaries and stuff, that he was just pushing seen. boundaries. He yeah. Was yeah. What would happen? Oh my God. What's she going to do? <laughs> pushing boundaries. Let's go back to your show. Yes. The blood. The blood, the gore. The penis. The penis. penis. The penis. There's, why is there so much penis? That's a great question. I what ask is, you I that haven't... every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I haven't watched it yet. And I haven't seen the boys. I, I have a hard time watching things that are like really intense. Yeah. Especially like because I'm always by myself. It's not <laughs> watching scary things. though. No, it's but like not scary. Gory. But it's a I don't lot. do well with yeah. like I always prep gore. it with, for people who haven't seen the boys. It's like it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, go- it's, it's gore and like, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Gore is the thing that I have the hardest time with. So it's harder it's for me yes. to. Oh, yeah. Just put it on, especially if I'm alone. <laughs> yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. So it's I think for that's people that like, really love that. Yeah. Yeah. However, you do an incredible job. In the, I think that the whole show is amazing. I think they did a brilliant job of casting it. Everyone in it is so good. I love your character. Mm-hmm. It happens to be my favorite, not just because it's you, but I like the character and how it's played by two people. Yeah. Can you talk to us about that? Because that I've never seen done. Has that been done? I don't think so. We've talked about it a little bit, Derek and I. Um, yeah, it's been wild. I mean, I've talked to you a little bit about it when I got back from Canada, all of my anxiety about it. Because mm. it's a big thing. I mean, it's a it's never been done as far as I know in that scale. Um, but I got so lucky I mean, Derek is such a good person and we are not alike in a lot of ways, but alike in a lot of ways in mm-hmm. that, in that weird kind of, I guess, brother, sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we just got, we got so lucky because that whole thing was a whirlwind getting there. And then he was not the first person I met. So there was that. I thought, okay, for sure. I'll meet the first person I'll see is this person that I'm sharing this role with. Right. And it wasn't. And oh, well. when I did meet him, it was so, he was just so calming. Aww. And we got to work on this together and we like built a character background and talked about it. And now we're like, I love him. I saw him last night. Like he's just the best. So that was, it was interesting. It was a very technical role. Right. Yeah. Very technical with the movement and then the, the screen having to fly in every time we had to do this, the switch from Derek to myself, from myself to Derek, we'd have to stand perfectly still and they'd fly in a screen, a little blue screen. And it took a long time. Right. <laughs> it's a very Just standing in the same special position. Yeah. And then God bless Jazz for hanging in there with us because she was always on the other end of the switch. Oh. Just standing there. It's like, I'll be right here. Yep. Broad Ideas is supported by OneSkin. Now that the holiday buzz is behind us, it's a great time to focus on self-care. And that means taking care of your skin's appearance and its health too. OneSkin makes it easy with their science-backed approach to healthier skin. 
I love how my skin feels after using One Skin. It feels moisturized. I feel like the lines are reduced. It's just a good time, you guys. One Skin doesn't only promise healthier skin, they prove it, and I am all in. I honestly didn't know what to expect when I started One Skin. Honestly, like I said before, I have noticed a visible change in some of the fine lines on my face. And yes, we all have them as we get older. Don't we, Rob? Rob's nodding. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code IDEAS at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code IDEAS. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. New year, healthier skin. That's One Skin. Broad Ideas is supported by First Leaf. I actually am loving the convenience of trying wines from all around the world and they just arrive at my doorstep. I always like to start the new year with something new. So this year I am expanding my palate by trying new wines with First Leaf. With personalized wines and convenient shipping, First Leaf makes it easy to explore new wines from around the world. I love First Leaf because they make it super easy to get personalized wine boxes delivered on my schedule. I can choose the day of my wine delivery so it makes me feel like I am in control. To get my tailored box of wines from First Leaf, all I had to do was answer some quick questions about my likes and dislikes on their website, and their expert team selected a customized assortment of world-class wines based on my preferences. I'm a big fan of Pinot Noir. I was very impressed with the selection that they sent to me. Try something new this year with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash ideas to sign up, and you'll get your first six hand-curated bottles for just $44.95. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash ideas. Try dot com slash ideas. Wow. That's what I was thinking. I was like, this is such a technical role. Yeah. Mm. So how did you guys find, like, what is the, what does it mean to you that you guys are the same person. (laughs) What do you mean? So what does that mean? Like, what is the premise of that character? Like, because when I watch it, I come up with my own ideas of like what that switch is really about and like metaphorically what that switch is. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean like, what does the character represent? Yeah. Ish? Like why they make it Mm. two people. Yeah. That's a good point. So I, I think... I mean, the one thing I will say about that is that this character was so thought through, so combed over, so picked through to make sure it was so precise by the showrunners and the writers and everybody in the room because it's a, it's an interesting character. It's odd. Different. Yeah. Um, and I talked to this amazing, um, one of the writing consultants on the show, and they said that Jordan's character is more so a reflection on basic gender norms in society. So it's holding a mirror to be like, this is how, if this bothers you, this is what you should be looking at, essentially. So Mm -hmm. in terms of gender roles, not in terms of the bi-gender aspect of the character, but in terms of the, you know, Jordan's usually portrayed as when they're stronger, they're in their feminine form and when they're, more sensitive or insecure they're in their masculine form mm. and how does that make you feel so it's wow. it's a big thing on gender roles yeah which was really fun and so and current. it worked really well <laughs> yeah it works because you know? Derek so is well. such a big heart he's just like a walking heart Aww. and I am so soulless sometimes <laughs> I want to get into that. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm very, I'm, you know, I'm practical. I don't, I'm not super emotional, contrary to the beginning of this episode. Um, <laughs> but it it worked and it was real. It was very easy to, we got to show how gender looks in society. You know, Jordan struggled a lot with switching when they want to be, when they want to feel strong and heard, they switched to their male side, which was a conversation. Mm. And then when they want to kind of disappear, it switches to the female side. Huh. Which was interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. It's fascinating. And yeah. Jazz's character is there to kind of call it out. Jazz's character is there as like, no, you 
don't have to change every time you want to make a point or every time you want right. to kiss me. It doesn't oh. need to be yeah. this switch. Oh, so do you both kiss? Like, do you both have a yes. romantic relationship with her? Mm-hmm. That's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because it does. It's it's also true. But like, yes, it starts, started, this started out emotional and with us, London is warm and fuzzy because we have history and love and all of that. But she, you do have, you're someone that I've always noticed is really good with boundaries. Mm. Yes. yes. That's <laughs> yes. huge. You know, heart, that's also like seeing how mature you are and Thank you. the confident, like how you hold yourself. I mean, that speaks to boundaries, I think, completely. Yeah. yeah. It's and never something I've had to think about. That's amazing. What, when's your Where birthday? Where does that come from? <laughs> My mom, probably. Uh. Just the way. Honestly, I was raised so everything was out in the open for me to see. Mm. Yeah. There was not a lot of like, I mean, we grew up in a studio full of actors. So I got to see, they're, I mean, they're insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was a lot of adult material being handed to me as a child. And like, you have to see these emotions and see what's happening. We lost friends when we were like, my family, my parents would lose friends to alcoholism or, mm. you know, stuff that was not talked about normally. And they, but everything was open. They didn't try to make it like, oh, he passed away and we don't know why. It was right. very clear. He had cirrhosis of the liver. He, he died. He drank too much. Very out in the open. It was so fascinating. Yeah. I know. I know a lot of people that do parent that way. And I have a harder time with, you know, I think I, I don't know if you want to say a bubble or whatever, but just to be, yeah. I mean, yeah, but, but to be the parents that are like, and like Brandy's like that. And I always talk about that. And I'm like, that's amazing. Like, I wish I could do that more or meet somewhere in the middle, at least, you know? Yeah. And find that. Yeah. It, it is inspiring because I think in a lot of ways we try to be like that. It's hard sometimes. Like we just lost one of our best friends to suicide mm. and Elliot knew he died. And we're like, what do you tell a kid? Mm-hmm. Like, and so- don't tell me Jeff told them the truth. Jeff told him a version of the truth. I was going to say, because Jeff is very like that. Like, he said yeah, he was mentally very, ill. Yeah. Oh, and he died. Yeah. Okay. I know, it's so hard. It's the I truth. I can't imagine, yeah, no, you know? Sure. Yeah. I can't imagine, imagine as a parent trying to <laughs> navigate that. Yeah, because like, you want to be honest, but it's a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's one of the things I noticed since you were a little girl. I'm like, you guys were around. They didn't try to earmuff Mm-mm. you or close your eyes to reality. And there's something about that that I feel is you get a lot of strength from as a person where it's not like one day you become an adult and it's, oh my God, I have to yeah. feel and process all this shit that nobody told me about. It's like you weren't overexposed to things that were inappropriate for you. But you had a healthy dose of reality as oh, a yeah. young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, things like like suicide and stuff. I remember my first conversation about what? something like that with my dad. Yeah. We had a teacher's assistant named Tiffany when I was in third grade. Who I Third loved. grade. That's my daughter. I loved her. And she came in one year, taught a couple classes, and hung out with us. She was great. I was really, I was really good friends with my science teacher. Like I would go eat in her room I did. I was not cool. I take my lunch and I go sit in my Mrs. Ligetti's room and I go have my lunch. And she was in the. She was she was with my dad. They they would go to meetings and. Tiffany would also go to meetings at the time, and I remember my dad talking about Tiffany passed away, and I was like, I don't understand what that means, mm-hmm. um, or why. I knew what it meant, but what happened. Right. And I had so many, I remember just having so many questions about it. Wow. And he told me everything. And it, it's did. been what? so fascinating to me. He told you everything in third yeah. grade? From what I remember, it was, it was, I mean, he told me everything he knew. So we didn't know what happened. We didn't know why. We knew that she had been let go of a job or she quit a job and wrote in her note that it was the happiest she felt ever right before she did it. Mm-hmm. And I remember being just, I remember being able to ask these questions of what, I don't understand why she'd be happy. Mm -hmm. And being like, well, she was at, that happens a lot with stuff like that. She felt like she was at peace with the decision and. We've heard that. Yeah. You know, that's. I know. So crazy. It's horrifying, but It's it's, it's horrendous. It's horrendous. But she also grew up with two people who their entire purpose in life was 
to extract what's human in every Mm -hmm. circumstance. Mm. So there was no like getting around that. Right. No. In your home. Like, what are you going to, you know what I mean? Like they would have to hide who they were as humans. Yeah. Which is not going to happen. They're not good at it. It's not even if they wanted to. My mom is the worst liar. Yeah. She's an atrocious liar. Like just awful. Um, I remember we tried to plan a surprise party for my dad and he called. We were out getting party supplies and I just remember I was a kid and he's like, hey, where are you guys? And she goes, "Uh, what? Out. And then hung up the phone. Like, (laughs) all right. So he knows now. Um, But yeah, no, it's, I grew up with just, everything was open Mm -hmm. in a way that felt safe. It wasn't open in a way where I was overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, these are so many adult exactly. situations coming right. away and I don't know what to do. Right. And then they talked. They just talked about everything. So you have a brother. Yes. Younger or older? Older. older. Three years older. How is he with life? He's fantastic. <laughs> He's but is he like you? Like boundaries, <laughs> secure, the openness? Yes. My brother annoyingly is much more emotionally evolved than I am. Wow. He's so cute. In a different way. <laughs> we just recently got into a screaming match about this. Um, he is fantastic. He's sober. Been sober his whole life. Never had a drink. Never, what? Never he sleep. never even tried it. Nope. He's just sober no by nature. No interest in it. Wow. Never. Happened. Wait, are your parents sober? Because you said My meetings. parents are sober. My dad is sober. My mom is not in the program, but she doesn't. She's never. She just doesn't yeah, drink. Just doesn't. Like your brother. Just not. Yeah. She, she had when she was younger. Yeah. She was, you know. But she wasn't for her. Not interested in it. Um, yeah, Ace never, he just didn't want to do it. That's such a gift. My, I remember my dad would like try to get him to try stuff. And <gasps> Why? Oh my gosh. Yeah, never, never wanted to. I'd honestly be worried about him if he did now. Yeah. His personality is wild as it is. Mm. It's, I can't imagine. Um, but he is so emotionally evolved in a very annoying way that it's, <laughs> makes it really hard to fight with him because he's, I, yeah, he's just he very good at, he's good at having a conversation. <laughs> right. Well, he's good at navigating a fight. I don't like conflict and I don't, I get, I'm cry. Um, so it's, he's there standing like, well, why do you feel this way? And let me explain to you why I feel this <sighs> way. And I feel, and I'm like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> yeah. <it> stop. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's, he's wonderful. He's very evolved. Yeah, and you're best and friends with his awesome. wife. Yes. Oh, really? And best yeah. friends with my sister-in-law. That's so cute. I love her. Isn't that cool? Are you best friends because they got married and then you knew her? Or no, did you know I'm, her before? No, just, I knew her after they met. Mm. So I tried to always be very friendly with his girlfriends. Some. <laughs> I did. I, I really made an effort to because I knew if I didn't, he would date them longer if I didn't like them. <laughs> and so I was really trying with everyone. Um and I really, really tried with the one before Val, and she was a very sweet girl. And then he met Valerie, and I was like, I'm so sick of trying to be nice to oh, <laughs> these yeah. people. And I didn't have to. I didn't well, have to. I, there was not a moment of trying to be nice. She's just your person. She's just my person. Aww. Yeah, I love her. And I, yeah, she's wonderful. That's so annoying. Great. She's wonderful. <laughs> what? She's annoying, but she's wonderful. We're all annoying. Yeah, but everyone's she's a sister. Annoying. She's sister annoying. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. yeah, that's the closest kind of yeah. relationship. Like this one. Sister, yeah. she's always annoyed. She's yeah. like, I don't know what to do with this person. <laughs> I don't annoy you. No, no. never. You don't actually don't. No. So are we not that, are we not sister close? Mm. I don't think we can get any closer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what in the world would we, we do? We live in each other's brains. We're more yeah. like, we're more like. Sister we're like, wives. We're more like sister wives. Hmm. We're more like yeah. golden girls close. Hmm. You know, <laughs> that made me think of I just Jeff's made a role. cheesecake. <laughs> she did. I sat with her while she made a cheesecake today. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's how um, we roll. That makes me happy. That's how we roll. Oh, I can't. But the thing too, like going back to the boundaries, I I thought it was interesting when I saw your wool because I was like, oh, that's such a perfect wool mm-hmm. for you because you're not a people pleaser. Like, Mm. I feel like the people that you're close with or the people you give yourself to is more selective. And then when, when you give yourself over, it's very genuine. And you're like, this is, you know, the, that you, 
are it's like cared Jeff. for. It's like Jeff. It yeah. Is. yeah. 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 It's exclusive. Yeah. It's exclusive. <laughs> it's exclusive. Yeah. But like you don't have that people pleasy thing. You're not like. Yeah. I, I try not to. Um, I mentioned it to you a little bit ago. It's, or a while ago. It's, it's been coming and going in waves lately, mm. the people pleasing thing. Cause I've never, that's not true. When I was a kid, well, yeah. When I was a kid, I remember, I remember asking my mom if I was annoying. I was like, am I annoying? Am I, am I like, cause I had annoyed an adult and they were irritated. And I think I took a step back at like seven was like, oh my God, am I an annoying kid? That's like annoying people. And she's like, are you, when the fact that you're asking me that is not, <laughs> no, a little bit, but no. Um, so I, since then, I've been, I've never really cared a lot about what people thought. But honestly, lately after the show, I found myself being in social situations where I was not comfortable yeah. at all and not being myself. And it, I couldn't tell if I wasn't comfortable, period, or if I wasn't comfortable because I wasn't being myself. Interesting. And I, I it's because I wasn't being myself. Right. Why do you think, I like, put what? a kibosh on that? I'm not doing that anymore. Good. <laughs> but what do you think, cause, um, like, what do you think? I think being around certain groups of people that are more, I'm not extroverted at all. Mm. And I've, tr- I was trying to be. Mm. I was trying to be, I'm, I'm not an extrovert. I'm not a cuddly girl. Mm-hmm. I want to be. I wish I was. I wish more than anything that I was. My dear love, Maddie Phillips, who plays Kate in the show, is like a human marshmallow. Like she just is the best. Um, but I'm not. I'm not that. Mm-hmm. Um, never liked sleepovers. Was never that person. And I think I found myself surrounded by people that were like that and wanting to feeling like when they got good news and they jumped up and down and screamed with excitement, and I was standing there in the corner, mm. feeling very excited, but looking like I was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell Rachel's loving you more and oh, more yeah, every I'm second. Like, I, so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't, I just, I was trying to manifest this like, woo, woo girl energy. And I just, just wasn't you. Exhausting. Mm. And I just got angry. I found myself getting so angry and resentful to the people around me who were not doing anything other than being themselves. Right. But I was like, I don't, I need to, and I told Maddie this, I was like, I just think that when I'm in groups, I need to separate myself. I need to walk away when I'm starting to feel uncomfortable and that's fine. I need to be okay with leaving early. I can't, I mean, but your self-awareness and like every, you just know yourself so well and the fact that you're vocal about it is so admirable because that is a very hard thing to do. I think for anyone and you're 26 years old. Like the fact, you are 26. Mm. She doesn't know. We think we're 20. We think you're 20, maybe 27. Ace Ace isn't 30. That's how I count down. (laughs) Okay. Yes, we're okay. in that ballpark. You're somewhere in that ballpark in anyway. There. But still, but just to have, and it's interesting in like the life you've lived and, you know, everything personally and like now professionally, and it's just totally influencing things around you. But like the fact that you can vocalize <laughs> is fucking amazing. I I still have a heart. Like I, that is what, so, something I like always focus on because it is very hard to do. Well, for a lot of people. I think. Yeah. It is. And I know it's going to change as I get older and around different situations too. I don't know too. though. Yeah. I, I try to keep everything open now of like, I know okay. it's going to change. Like, it's like my idea of having a kid. I have all these thoughts mm-hmm. of what it's going to be like. Right. Right. I know it's not going to be that way. I'm going to hold on to hope a little bit, mm-hmm. but like, I'm trying to get my control freak issues mm. under control. I'm trying to like, <laughs> I'm trying to control my yeah, control yeah. issues. I'm trying to be okay with like you can make a plan and that's the easiest way it's going to change. It's not going to happen. You can't make plans. I know, right. but I uh, want to. I know, of course. Uh, I, I always say like we leave the door open for miracles. So like when yeah. people are like, "Oh, that's hard to change or it might not." I'm like if we close that door on our thinking, it won't change. Mm-hmm. But if you keep one door open for miracles, like keep it open that you may end up starting to feel more comfortable because you give yourself permission to leave early or yeah. to be yourself and not be the woo energy girl. And that is something I feel like we're just getting to at our stage mm-hmm. of life where we're like, 
Our old age. Well, yeah. that's, but to be honest, that's why I drank so much mm. is because I thought I was comfortable. I wasn't comfortable. I was drunk. Well, right. that's, the, you know? right. that's like, what I've been also keeping in check too because everyone in my family is sober. When I decided to not be sober, which was when I was 21, yeah. it was a huge deal. It was a huge conversation mm. that I chose to have. It wasn't like my mom sat me down and was like, listen, she didn't want anything to do with that conversation. She wanted me to choose what I wanted to do. But I made it a big deal. I sat down with a sober friend and I was like, I think I don't want to be sober. I want to mm. drink. I'm 21. And he talked me through like, okay, well, are you sure? Because it's, out, it, you know, it runs in your family and this is what you have to look forward, like look out for. And now going to events, I'm so hyper aware of like, yeah. okay, I'm having a drink because I want to or because I feel uncomfortable. Oh. See, yeah, that's a big oh, deal. interesting. Yeah. That and what really do you do though? What if you're feeling uncomfortable and you want to drink? Then I play it by ear. I'll, I'll like last night I went to an event and I was feeling happy. Mm-hmm. And so I had a glass of champagne. I was yeah. like, okay, I'm feeling happy and I'm feeling fun. I try to, I don't, I try to not get drunk, drunk ever now, mainly because I get sick mm, and because yeah. I hate it. I don't like the feeling. It's not fun. Um, but yeah, I, I always, I'm always in check with that. That's never, that's been a huge deal in my life where I've never just been like, let's just go get, you know, let's just go get trashed. Yeah. I've always made sure like, and especially if that does happen, I have to sit back and think, what happened? Like what, where along the lines of that night did I go too far? Do I feel like I, what can I do next that's not going to do that? And mm. is this a problem? Right. Every time. Broad Ideas is supported by Sundays for Dogs. I love the convenience of Sundays for Dogs. You don't have to do any prep. It just shows up, you open it, you pour it, they eat it. Sundays is fresh dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients. It contains 90% meat, 10% superfoods, and 0% synthetic nutrients or artificial ingredients. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, better poops, and more energy after switching to Sundays. I am loving it so much. I really have noticed a difference in Gertie's energy and her skin. She's always been so itchy and that has stopped. Unlike other fresh dog foods, Sundays does not require refrigeration or preparation because of their air drying process. Just pour and serve. When you start a Sunday subscription, you'll automatically get 20% off and free shipping on every reorder. Cancel or pause your subscription anytime with our 100% satisfaction guarantee. Every order ships right to your door, so you'll never worry about running out of dog food again. It was really so easy to store and to serve. Get 40% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundaysfordogs.com slash ideas or use code ideas at checkout. That's sundaysfordogs.com slash ideas or use code ideas at checkout. Well, do you think it's possible that maybe you are more like your mom? Than your dad in that regard, how you can control, you know what I mean? Because your mom has no interest. Yes. yes. Do you yeah. feel? No, I feel fully in control of yeah. my drinking. She's I like, just, no, I feel fully interested. <laughs> <I'm> very interested. <laughs> well, so it started out with just an interest in spirits. I love mm. the history of beer, wine, and booze. I think it's fascinating. Um, and so that was a big part of it too. Like, I think wine is so interesting. I mm-hmm. think it's be- like, I worked under some amazing mixology people. And so learning about spirits was great. But I've never felt like I don't go home and I'm like, I need a glass of wine. Right. I'm not, I get depressed if it sounds sad to me. Like, I don't want to drink mm-hmm. alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to drink when we're celebrating or when something good is happening. Yeah. Right. I don't ever feel the need to drink when I'm sad. Yeah. But my thing is like keeping it, in check all the time. Right. Even if it's not a problem, I have to just… Just mentally, you're… That was the conversation I had when I decided with the the my sober friend. He said, just check. Check in. Like, yeah, do a mm-hmm. check. Mm-hmm. And I do. And it's been interesting to watch mm. myself. And there's plenty of people. Like, I can say in my family, on both sides, pretty much every single person on both sides is an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. There's a few that… They drink reasonably, like completely reasonably. It's never been an issue for them. Yet their parents were alcoholics, sisters, brothers, cousins, wives, everyone. But like my aunt, my cousins, like they're not, 
you know? And so I think that when you know, Jeff always says this thing that I think is brilliant is like genetics loads the gun, environment pulls the trigger. Mm -hmm. And so it is being mindful of the environment. And it's like, what am I using this for? Like how, because if it does run in the DNA, there's the responsibility of what environment you're putting in your body to activate those genes, Mm -hmm. right? And so when you start doing it because you're uncomfortable or because you feel lonely or because you feel this or because you feel that, you're creating an environment to activate that. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if you're doing it like you say, like where you're like, I'm happy, I feel good, I feel joy, like that's a totally different relationship to Mm -hmm. it. Yes. But there is that lineage that you come from that I'm sure your awareness isn't like a typical person. Yeah. And it's ever changing too. I mean, it's always going to be changing. Right. I have to constantly check it. Yeah. Which is good. It's like a brain exercise. It's very responsible. Thank you. That's what it is. Thank you. (laughs) I need to check in with myself. It has nothing to do with alcohol, but I think everyone should check in with themselves. It's the easiest way to (laughs) just (laughs) deep thoughts. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm here everyone for. Everyone check in. <laughs> check in with yourself. Check in I did that yourself. last night and Jeff goes, are you checking in with what yourself? What do you mean? Like, ver- like out loud? What you- he asked me a question and I was like, hold on. <laughs> and I closed my eyes and I went inside. He goes, um, excuse me, are you checking in with yourself? And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> you have to. Give me a minute. I'm checking in with myself. Wait, but I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I needed to check in. It's before hard I gave the to, answer. Right. Like, I needed to give myself this, the, like, I check don't in do that. Space, I have you know? pressure yeah. and I just go. Mm-hmm. Why? I mm. don't know. I have prob- My brain has problems. <laughs> we know this. What are we going to do with this one? I don't know. It's really, I'm, I'm just getting worse. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse, you guys. I don't even know. She Where bought, am I? She bought me this sweater, okay? <laughs> she bought this for me. I walked in today wearing it. She goes, oh, I like that sweater. It reminds me of the one I got for myself. Well, she got herself the same sweater. Didn't remember. the same exact sweater. But didn't remember getting this for me. Not a clue. Hmm. Not a clue, okay? And then it's like, oh, I like that. <laughs> like, you got it for me. It's so weird. I know. So what's okay. going on? Enough about me. Yeah, back, check in. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat today either. I'm a little. <laughs> I've been forgetting to eat. You keep forgetting to eat? I've never forgot. I I do. I have been. Never done that before. Oh my gosh. What I do you think that is? Eating. I love eating. How I'm, are you wanna... dealing with all of this? Uh, like really, no, London. <laughs> it's a lot all at once. It's a lot. Yeah. Like you went from boom, like kinda. that's overnight. Kind of. Why kind of? Well, kind of because there was a whole year of waiting of it was yeah you mean you shot it and then it didn't come out for a year yeah we filmed it in 2022 oh we filmed it may to september wow okay we thought it would come out i don't know what in my oh, brain i thought it right. was gonna come out sooner march you're like tomorrow and it came out in <laughs> september of this year so you waited okay and then the strike so we couldn't talk about it oh gosh while it was out, which was great actually what's it yeah i loved it oh I love You're like, it. I didn't have to do anything. I you are my loved spirit animal. It. <laughs> <laughs> you are my soulmate. Well, so <laughs> Shelly, who was on the show, made a really interesting point of like, we got to sit back in the audience and kind of go, oh, I get to see what people genuinely feel about this mm-hmm. show. I'm not on Instagram posting behind the scenes photos and right. reading hate comments and good comments either uh, way. Oof. I'm sitting back and going like, oh, objectively. And I think I'd feel a different way if people didn't like the show as much as they did. But people liked it. So I got to feel good about it and not have to deal with the social media stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. And we watched it as a, as a cast every episode. We oh, watch you it. did? Mm-hmm. That's really sweet. I and did you film in Toronto? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, and some of the directors had us over to their house to have a screening of their episodes. That's it was so really sweet. lovely. But um, how I'm dealing with it? Fine. Like, how's your, well, I, I, I do I feel good. <laughs> You're like, I think I'm okay. Yeah. Well, the, it, it's a lot. For, I, I don't think this is talked enough about is mm-hmm. the mental health when it comes to success. Yeah. To fame, mm-hmm. to having your dreams realized. Like some of these things can be really kind of hard on the mental health. And so I'm curious going from living like a typical life to all of a sudden 
you have a publicist, you're going to these events, you're speaking to things, you're doing press, you're doing, like, it's pretty yeah. drastic. So, yes, it is. Um, that that has been oddly a smooth transition. That stuff has been fun. I try to take every party and press thing, which would normally have given me massive anxiety and does a little bit, but I try to take it all as like a good learning experience. Like every, every event is going to either be great or not or fine, but it's still going to teach me something. Right. It's hard because you want to be grateful and I'm so grateful. Just going to blanket that. That statement is going to go over all of this as I'm yeah. so grateful for all of this, obviously. But yeah, no, your your dreams come true. You're on a show and it's not, it's not as exciting as you want it to be. Like, it's <laughs> That's exciting. what I mean. I think there's a I'm mental health so toll it proud. takes on people. Yeah, I'm so proud of our show. I'm so proud of the crew. I'm so proud of the team. I'm so proud of the product and so grateful that I did what I want to do and I get to do what I want to do for a living. It's amazing. But yeah, it's, it's a constant. I mean, it's what acting is though. It's constantly being disappointed with what you want. Mm -hmm. Not disappointed, but constantly not. I don't think, I don't know because I can't speak for anybody else, but I don't know if you ever feel fully realized in this career, mm -hmm. which I'm okay with. I'm mm -hmm. okay. That's why people keep doing it. If there was anything else I could do, I would do it. I love that your parents were so supportive of what was best for you yeah. and not like pushing an agenda, you know? No, they always joked about me going to be a doctor. Did they ever tell you? I've not, I mean, because I know the behind the scenes that we won't talk about, but did they ever tell you like not to date people in class? No. So uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I want what? what? Well, because acting class, you know, there's it's a, everyone in a, a dating, room right? Of, yes. Hot actors. Yeah. yeah. And I'm 18 and I was like, I want to date. Did yeah. you? Yes. yes. You did everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. No, they never told me that. The, I, I was never told not to lie, but I hated lying to my mom. Mm. Yeah. I was not good at it. I didn't like it. It made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I told her an unnecessary amount of information that she did not want to hear. <laughs> but I remember <laughs> the only thing I… Two things I lied to her about. I lied to her about going to see a movie without her. No. And I told her the next day. Yeah. I was like, remember when I told you I did this? I actually saw this movie without you, and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then after that, shortly after that, I lied to her about losing my virginity. <laughs> <gasps> that gave it did to it? us. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't lie to her. I didn't tell her. Okay. Yeah. Because she dropped me off. She dropped me off at this guy's house that I was dating. Um, and she knew you were dating him and yes. where you were going. Yes. It was, yeah. And uh, she said, but don't have sex. <laughs> when I was getting out of the car, she's like, just don't have sex. I was like, cool. Did have sex. Yeah. Um, and then the next day or like a couple days, I think the next day, I don't imagine I could have gone longer than a day. The next day, I, we were driving in the car on the way to the studio. And I was like, remember when you dropped me off at the house and you told me not to have sex? <laughs> Listen, I did. Um, and I was telling her, and I told her, I told her with who, even though she knew with who, I felt like I needed to reiterate who it was for some reason. <laughs> right. Just to, like, <laughs> and she had a panic attack. Oh, she, she, she did? Did not look at me the whole time. Not in an angry way, in a, I can't She didn't breathe. Know. Yeah. No, she knew. She told me but before just I got out of the car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. gripped the steering wheel. Her hands were white. <laughs> and she was driving going, I can't. I can't breathe. I'm going to throw. I can't <gasps> breathe. We drove the whole way there. I was cracking. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm like, well, you know. Yeah. And we pull up. And of course, he was a student. Oh. Oh, no standing. wonder she had a panic attack. He's standing outside getting ready for class. <gasps> she has to teach it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, God bless her. She put up with so much. She How did. old were you? She did. When you lost her virginity? 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a decent freaking age. That is, uh, that is a legal like, age. That is, you know what that is? Well, that was what a big part of it was. Legal. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. You know what that is? <laughs> that's legal. Um, yeah. That, not so okay, legal. Okay. All right. Not legal. <laughs> there was a, yeah, there was a, <laughs> there was no discussion about don't date people. But I would always sit there. Did you date a lot of people in acting class? I didn't date anyone mm -hmm. from that acting class. Nobody? I don't think a single person. No. Right? 
No, but you were at a you were in a lull time. No, you weren't at the good time. Oh, there no. were oh, there weren't good options. Is that what you you're saying? The, well, you I was there before was low with your season. dad, and I don't think I might have like kissed one guy mm. in class, not in class, but like, out of class <laughs> uh, on stage you know? in a scene. <laughs> but my first kiss was in a scene. Really, this is mm-hmm. so fun. Mm-hmm. Your first kiss ever? Mm-hmm. That was glass menagerie. Oh my gosh. Mm, I love the glass Tennessee. Oh gosh. I know. That's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. Well, my first real boyfriend was from the studio. Oh my goodness. For Who two was, and a half years. Oh, what's his name? Oh, wow. Maddie. Yeah, that's what? right. What's his name? Maddie. Maddie. Yeah. Mm, very sweet. Well, Maddie. it's hard when you're with… The thing is, is that like you're with all these attractive people. It's the same people. thing that goes. Yeah. Like when you're working… Don't go to a grocery store hungry. Right. Don't go to the grocery store. Don't home. go to an I'm acting always class. Horny. Starving. No, I'm just kidding. But no, it's true because you surround yourself with yeah. these people all the time. You're sharing so much. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. It's like any workplace. I, it never and happened for me. I don't understand mm. that. I don't get that. I, I mean, was, I was really guarded. Was, yeah. I was. You think that you was were? What it was? Well, was you were guarded. You were waiting for. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was first there, when I was studying with your dad, were you sober. I was ne- far from sober. Okay. And oh, yeah. I had like a one-track mind because I was like, there was someone outside of the studio that I had feelings mm. for. But when it came to the actors in the studio, I was guarded. Interesting. Like I never, hmm. I think there was something really vulnerable about acting to me mm-hmm. and I never wanted to feel like. You don't want to give the other, like your vulnerable personal Yes. Side to them? I that never sense. wanted to feel unsafe right. in acting. Class. Right. That's smart. Yeah. You're I like, didn't, I did I not didn't do care. that. <laughs> I used to look at you and think that you were braver than I was. I was like, she's like, I don't know. Like, I think uh, you were like more like, I don't know if brave. I don't know. I was, I was guarded. cold. I was very cold to these men. That's well, why you got them all. Yeah, yeah. I was not. I was, I, I, I did not date them. Right. Um, and I didn't have a lot of interest in dating most of them. <laughs> I, they were, I mean, <laughs> There was a row of I'm laughing because I know who they all are. Yeah. There was a there was a row of them at my wedding. A row? I, oh, I know. I was there. A row of them, she says. A row of them. But that's at what her I, wedding. But that's what I like. True. I they were they were and are my friends. They mostly. That's like you. Yeah. You were saying Some you of them stayed dead friends. To me. <laughs> I keep on my I keep all, I keep I keep all she keeps them in all in her basement <laughs> too. Because if you are friends and you really have that relationship, then it's like, great, this new chapter. You love it. I was really good at separating sex and feeling. Yes. Oh, you can do that? Sex and love. Sex and romance. So you can just like, sex can be casual and it's not, doesn't need the attachment. Yeah. And you enjoy it that like Yeah, more so. (laughs) Yeah. And more so. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with you. Yeah. I I, know I never had a problem. That's what I mean about these boundaries. I know. It's amazing. It was also but it was bad. It was not nice to these people. Some of them. But it was mean. Youth. But you're still friends with them. Not those ones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but, you but know. I find it fascinating though that women can do that mm-hmm. and enjoy it. So totally disconnect. Some can. Some. Some can. can. No, I don't recommend saying. it. I was talking to a friend of mine about this. I don't recommend it for people. I've told you know I have a friend who's exploring her sexuality and she's like, well, can I like? What do you think about like casual stuff? And I was like. I love it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Yeah. If your personality is one that's going right. to get attached, don't don't try it. Don't right. start it because it's a disaster. If you're going to get attached. My my thing was more like you do it, but you don't have the interest or feeling. And like, you know, it's casual, mm-hmm. whatever. And I don't find that like I can get anything out of those situations. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, eh. All right, sex. like you that was sex out of it. Yeah, because yeah, you're but a romantic. <laughs> you're like a die-hard romantic. I guess. See, I guess I found the, but I to be so more interesting than, than sex to me was the conversation, the like pillow talk. I found that mm. very fascinating, and I did not feel emotionally attached to it. Right. I wonder um. if that's because you started acting so young and sharing yourself in all these ways, like. Well, I wouldn't share. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would not. No, I oh. would not share. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Not me. But you Them. could be intimate with people because you would do it in scenes far 
before you were actually doing those things. Yes. And so you had that foundation of like, I can look at you in the face and you can say these things to me and we can feel these feelings, exchange mm-hmm. these moments and it's safe. You had that before you started actually doing it in real life. Yeah. And it was mm-hmm. never manipulative. It was never like, oh, tell me all your stuff. Right. I don't give a fuck. It was, I care. I want to hear about these things, but then I'm also, don't come to my house. I don't. <laughs> like, oh my God. I, I, yeah, there was a bad, the, there was a New Year's that was not good um, with a situation like that where I thought I was friends with this guy. I thought it was a great friends situation. Yeah. Um, And then he showed up at my house on New Year's. I was like, don't come to my house. Oh, like unannounced. Well, he's like, I'll see you at midnight. I was like, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like a I'm, grand gesture. I'm working. And he's like, okay, well, I'll see you when you get off work. I was like, don't come to my house. Oh, and no. And he came to my house. Oh, no. Very nice guy. Um. <laughs> Oh my and he goodness. came, he got me like a chocolate and I was like, that's so sweet. Sure. Come in. I guess I live in, I lived in Agora at the time. So he drove a long yeah, way. Long way. Yeah. Like, come in. Sure. It's just my brother and Valerie and my mom, but all right. He came in and I pulled Val aside and I was like, I can't kiss him <gasps> at midnight. Oh no. We're at all again because of this. Well, so I'm going to make a thing and then go to bed. And I coughed. I started to cough at 11.59. <gasps> I coughed for a minute straight. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I can't. <sighs> for a minute. And then I was like, I'm going to go to bed. And he stayed for an hour and played video games with my brother and then left. Oh. Did you ever talk to him again? Yeah, no, I saw him around. He hates me. Aww. It's okay. That's okay. I get it. It's a little I get it too. I understand. Like, oh, yeah. I can't blame him, honestly. It's there was some miscommunication at some point. And how's Carson with all that? Like, does he know? He knows. That's your husband. Yes. Yeah. He knows. We talk about it. It's not his favorite topic. No. <laughs> I trust me. <laughs> but I it's get that. <laughs> he is the least jealous person in such That's a wonderful so way. Awesome. Protective, yeah. but not jealous. Yeah. Um That's a good way to put it. Uh huh. And so we talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking for things that we're like, I like that. Yeah. I oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Protective, yeah. Protective, yeah. not jealous. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> we're always like. <laughs> but he is. And it's it's so nice because I don't need someone to be jealous. It doesn't make me feel happy. Right. <laughs> like it doesn't. Never I don't get excited we, about it. Like You've never hmm. experienced someone jealous? I've never been. I Wait, wish what? I no, no, no. Jealous. I know we talk about this. Like, there's you like that part it. of the ego that you're like, wait, they're not going to be like jealous. At I all? think I'm attracted. You've never been to with a men man that-, that are not jealous types. Mm. I've never liked a guy that's a jealous type of guy. I'm going in my head. I've I'm, always liked yeah. guys that mm. had like a internal confidence that mm-hmm, was like, mm-hmm. yeah, to your mind or swag. You know, <laughs> like I've never liked a guy that was a guy that got jealous. I find it so tedious and yeah. exhausting. Yeah. It's I not like, attractive. I, mean, I no. think I've had a mixed bag. I've experienced both. But yeah, it's interesting when there is the one that's just not jealous. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted it a little bit. Right. I'm like, don't you care? Yeah. I'm giving well, Dave wait. a lap dance. Okay, but, and they'd be like, <laughs> high five care. Dave on yeah. the way out. Like, <laughs> like, like, but what? that was like we had a friend who was in a marriage and then they opened it up mm-hmm. for her. And she, there was a little part of her that was like, wait, he's letting me do this? Like, mm. where's the little inkling of, like, jealousy or… Right, but that's even further. Like, Jeff wouldn't want me to do that, mm. but it's not from right. jealousy. It's from boundaries. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. That makes I'm sense. jealous. I get you are? super jealous. You do? Yeah. Never before until… My husband. Until oh, person. wow. Mm-hmm. You're I like, that's care. how I know you're the I one. I didn't care about anyone else before that. Aww. Wow. In that, in that way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's not going to fuck anything up with you. Oh, no. He's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you get great. jealous? Like what? Well, he works with probably a lot of women. Or? No, it's not even real jealousy. Oh. It's, it's Things that you like <laughs> in your head come up with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I struggled. <laughs> he's going to hate this. I struggled really hard with his... Uh, ex-girlfriend being jealous of his ex-girlfriend mm. and his college girlfriend. Are they still friends? She's dead. <gasps> oh. That's, sadly. But she's been dead. And I was still like… Like before I you guys got together? Yes. Yeah. And I was like, this bitch. Like, 
Oh my god, London. <laughs> like, this bitch. Oh my god. But how bad is that? I used to tell my, I confessed to my sister and I was like, I don't feel good about this. Like, I'm jealous of the Iconic person who passed away. Path. Like, horrible, sad, tragic. But did they break up because she passed away? Was that the reason they, they broke were up? broken up? like, I'm going to break up <laughs> no. with you because you're dead. <laughs> Sorry. No, I meant like, were they together they had, when she no, died? They were not. Sorry. No. Okay. It I was should have rocky. phrased that differently. But I kind of understand here's something that's a little bit unfair because everyone else's ex, you can compare yourself to and be like, I'm better than them. They suck. Da, da, yeah. da, da. With her, she's dead. So now she has to be the hero and like, her image lives on and you I have know. to honor it, you know? And he's so sweet about it. And <laughs> do you he, get what I mean? It sounds I bad, do. but it, it, it is real. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, it's you're just real. speaking like anyone who had a piece of him, you have maybe jealousy She's of. like, no, it's just her. I think it's mainly her. <laughs> because I don't know her. <laughs> I, can, I don't know. She's a legend. She's she, right. That's, legend. What, I mean. that's what you mean. She's yeah. a legend. Yeah, you can't that's touch hard. That. Yeah. It's like when you and hear, I don't want to because she sounded lovely and she's dead. So right. I yeah. want to respect that. But it's her. like when people date widows and you're like, well, you're never going to compare. I know. To the know. you know partner that's gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with it now. That would be a hard <laughs> position, I think. And he's been very sweet about it. Like we were that's hard. we were unpacking yeah. the house and he found these little glasses and he's like, hey, so she gave me these. I've been keeping them because they're I don't want to. Disrespect yeah. the dead, and also they're pretty. And I was like, they're they're pretty. Let's put them out. So we have those out now. Oh, it was a big, you know. Yeah, it was a stupid. Like I didn't have. I think it was mainly that I didn't have anyone else to be jealous of. Yeah, right. So I clung to this. You one, found like, something to put. Those. I got this. I'll be upset about. I know what you her. mean. We do that to ourselves. Yeah, it's we wild. find things. I hate when I do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. I you've I gotten way know. like you don't really do it. I don't do it with that with. Anymore with Jeff, no. but you used but to. I used to, yeah. of course. Yeah, I don't. I'm getting better at it. Yeah, I kind of yeah. liked it though. I was like, oh, I'm jealous of this person. Right. I like being protective of him. I do too. I'm very protective. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, we always say we like we always like the ones that like, you know, can own a room where you're like, oh, people of everyone will gravitate towards this person. Yes. Yeah. He's a good. He's good at that. <laughs> He's good, at that. He's good at that. Yeah. But yeah, he doesn't, he never minds talking about exes and stuff. And mm. He's friends with some of them. He's just confident. His exes or yours? Both. Her, her. Oh. See, so. I like that. I are mean, you, his exes live in different states. Mine are all here. He has to deal with that. That's why you're okay with all it. That's what I mean, though. And here. he was cool, like wedding, all good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Who, yep. Knew. Yeah, knew. She's yeah. like, can yeah, you yeah, yeah. edit this whole episode? Yeah, you're like, um, I just <laughs> no, he did. So it was, much. and they're important to me. I think the big thing was they're important to me, mm. and I needed them there. Yeah. So they were there. And he just loves you so much and is so supportive. Support mm. is so huge, okay? Yeah. That sounds like a really generic blanket it's statement. True, though. But it's so true. And when you have it and you feel it, it makes such a fucking difference. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's a it's a big problem. It's why I really didn't want to date a working actor. Mm. Like I respect that he's an artist mm-hmm. and understands the role, and I hope that he does pursue it one day because he's great. But I did not want to date an actor because even if it's a even if I'm dating a guy and the roles are nowhere similar, there's still jealousy. There's still going to be some form of jealousy usually. Well, that's why I was asking that. So wouldn't that be the same if it was something that's in his heart that he wants to do and he's doing something else? Wouldn't that still come up? No, because he's so content with himself. Wow. That's he's amazing. He's so confident and mm-hmm. content with what he's doing. Right. That's incredible. Yeah, what it is gift. incredible. I know. It's annoying. What does that feel like? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I didn't want to date an actor because I didn't want to deal with my first boyfriend was an actor and it was a struggle. Mm-hmm. Any bit of success I got, he was happy for me, but there was always a little like, why am I not there? Why am I not doing this? Yeah, that's not the that's not the Oof. space you want to share with your partner. No. I totally feel like that. I yeah. feel like I will say I have dated working actors and I have Let's list them. Had Let's lots list them. <laughs> All right, calm down. And I have had that support with that mm-hmm. as well, you know? So I think that it goes by yeah. person to person. Yeah, too. it's definitely I mean, individualized yeah. for sure. I think I just had such a bad experience with that aspect in my first relationship that I was like, I don't want to do that again mm. ever. Well, it's good you know. Yeah. And there you go. What about your friends? 
What? How is it with <laughs> <laughs> which friends? <laughs> Oh my god. Mm. You right. have friends. Which ones? I'm just saying any of them. <laughs> like, has it been hard? Because I know, like, even when Rachel got the OC, it was like in the beginning, it's like it affected oh, we were young. Oh yeah. We were she's young. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still it I think it depends. I'm really trying to be conscious of that because I did it today. I saw news of someone that I'm not friends with, but an acquaintance of booking a show, and I was like, why is my first reaction anger? <laughs> like, oh, I don't want to be angry. I don't know this person. I'm on a show. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I upset? Um, and I had to check it. I had to check it really quickly. You checked in with yourself? Yeah, I checked in with myself. <laughs> I was like, don't do that. Yeah. She worked. You don't know her, first of all, well enough. You to don't be even know her. Oh, she's this. an acquaintance. Got she's, it. I've met her a couple times, but I don't know what her story I don't know yeah. how hard she's worked to get here. I'm sure she's very deserving and talented and wonderful. Don't be a bitch. Like your honesty and transparency is so refreshing. <laughs> it happens all the time. It still happens. And it's Yeah. I mean, it happened, it happens with my co-stars with, with like Derek would get an audition. I'd be like, why am I not getting an audition? Mm-hmm. We're the same person. while we're filming. We're the same person. <laughs> Listen, I'll audition at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so it's hard. It's hard. It's a constant check-in. It's a hard business. It's just a hard business. In it general. really is a hard business. But no, I mean, like, as far as your friends go, like, have you sensed a change from them? Like, do you feel like they're jealous of what you're going through? Do you feel like... No. Good. No. Because I don't... I kind of unconsciously curated a group of friends yep. that is fantastic. That's so- I also don't have close hey. friends. <laughs> My close friends are friends that I don't... I see every, like, month, maybe. Hmm. I'm not a... I, alone most of the time. <laughs> like I have my dogs and I have my house and I'm very content. Yeah. Um, but I have close friends that I see when I need to see them and they're okay with that and we're okay with that. Right. Um, but no, I've been so lucky to have everyone's just been supportive and wonderful. And I've seen changes in other my other castmates' friends and I'm so happy I don't have to deal with that. Right. But it's it, it comes down to exactly what you said. It's curating the type of people. We just talked about this yesterday. We were talking about someone and I was like, that's a hard no for me. Like we don't have the space and energy to let people into our lives that aren't happy for other people. Yes. And yeah. so yeah. it starts from before you get the show. It starts while you have it. It's how you look at your life, no matter what you're doing. Like, are you surrounding yourself with people that are genuinely going to have your best interests at heart. And even if things do come up, they work on it or they talk to you about it. Like there's certain people that it, it does take energy and effort to be like, I don't have those kind of people in my life that mm-hmm. aren't going to be celebratory. Well, it's also, it's on the other side of it too, is I'm very honest with everyone about <laughs> how I'm feeling about this, yeah. all this stuff, all this success. Like I don't, I don't, why, what's the point of going around being like, everything's great. Everything's fantastic. Right. It's it is in the grand scheme of things mm-hmm. amazing and I'm very happy and grateful. But it's what we were talking about. It's not what I expected. Right. And that's not to be self-deprecating no. when having that conversation. If someone's like, how does it feel? Mm-hmm. Like if one of my close friends is like, this must feel so good, I'm not gonna be like, mm, it's fine. Right. Like, it is. It's also it's interesting. It's a continuing every day is different. It's interesting. Right. And then they see you as human. You're not putting yourself in a position where you've changed massively now, you know? Right. Right. It's just a constant conversation. Yeah, it is. Which I think is, um, what was I going to say? Like, they say all the time, like, the worst thing that can happen to you is your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you have this kind of carrot that you're going after, you're going after, and you think, okay, once I get to that carrot... I'm going to feel different. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to feel content or satiated or any of those things. And they say like the worst thing you could do is get the carrot because Mm -hmm. then you realize all of that stuff you created that's going to be the thing that fix you doesn't work. And you're still human and you still have a bad shitty days and you still feel feelings and getting the thing doesn't take away that. No. And I think I got lucky, honestly, because the way... (laughs) 
the way I booked the show and the way that that all went down was a huge, like, fuck you from the universe. It was, it was not at all what I thought was going to happen. It happened in such a way that it was a preparation of like, this is what the rest of your life is going to feel like. It's going to feel like you're constantly getting the rug pulled out from underneath Mm. you. I mean, I, I was two months away from my wedding. I was three months away from my wedding. When you booked the show? Yeah. My husband's dad had died, just died. <gasps> I was I was at his funeral. I was at the funeral. The night before the funeral, I had done the self-tape a couple days earlier, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I was so stressed out and tired. I did it. I was like, okay. Um, and then I went to Virginia. It was the night before the funeral. Carson was asleep. And my agent called and was like, hey, they want you for this part, but they want to know if you'll move your wedding. I was like, oh. <gasps> And he's asleep. I can't. And his dad's dead. I'm not going to be like, wake up my career. <laughs> like, oh, my Listen, we gosh. need to talk about my life. Um, I did. I woke him up. I was like, hey, if I need to move the wedding just hypothetically, are you okay with it? He's like, yeah, it's fine. So I said yes. They thankfully didn't need me to move the wedding. But it all happened that night. So it was midnight. Wow. And I'm on the phone. I was like, I will, but I don't want to. Can you check back? And... The next day at the funeral, I got the call that they were going to be okay with not moving the wedding. The next day I landed in LA and they called me and they said I got the show. The next two days later, I was on a plane at 5 a.m. to Canada. Wow. Leaving my recently (sighs) lost his dad, husband behind to take care of our dogs. And so that all happened in a way. I never thought that I would book my first show, first big show like that. Yeah. What a nightmare. Like I was pacing back and forth in their living room on the phone trying to decide what to do. I called my mom like, I don't want to move my wedding. Like, I know that this is silly, but I don't want to do that. And I remember his dad was sitting in an urn on the counter. And I looked at it. I was like, this is, this is his. He's doing this. This is him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to know him fully as a person, but I know that this is something he would be Doing just ended. to be like, haha. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd recently lost another friend too. And it felt very much like it was the two of them going like, ooh, let's, because it was, it was um, Jazz Sinclair, who's on the show. It was our mutual friend had passed away. I had just seen Jazz. Um, so nuts. Oh, wow. And then this happened right after. And he passed away in such, a, both of them, uh, Christian passed away in a very unexpected way. Mm. And I don't know if you know him, Christian Uten. Such a, one of those people that you're like, why? Not mm-hmm. this guy. Why? Like yeah. of all the people. Um, so it felt like him and, and Lee both putting their hands in and being like, okay, Aww. let's do this, but let's do this. Let's, let's have some let's fun. Fuck them yeah. up a little. Let's do a little bit of fun with this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that, that helped me know that this is never going to be what I expect it to be. Mm -hmm. I have to be fully ready for it to be wild and weird. I mean, the SAG, the strike. Yeah. Like that alone. Right. Was weird. Right. And not what I wanted. I know. (laughs) And push production back a while, but it happened. Wait yeah. until you Probably have kids. Probably for a reason. No. <laughs> Wait till you just have kidding. kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my yeah. goodness. But yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's an important message that it's like you got to get content with whatever is going on inside and it's not mm-hmm. the thing that's going to do it for you. Yeah. Right? Which I do feel like that. I mean, I'm going to work forever. I'm always, a, I love working. But that was the other thing is it, when you asked what it's like to suddenly feel this change and shift. I didn't. I was working. I've been working at a restaurant for like a few months now. <laughs> I was working until the show came out because I didn't need to, but I wanted to. What restaurant? I was working at a restaurant in Woodland Hills. I was a bartender. I was like, we got back. I taught, I was teaching STEM for a little while to kids because um, I was like, oh, I like kids. I like teaching. And then I left that because I thought we were going back to work. And then the strike happened. And I was like, well, I'm bored. I'm going to get a job. So I've been working. I like, it hasn't been an immediate, like I'm a star. It's yeah. been like, I've been serving. I didn't tell anyone at the restaurant I was on a show. Oh, wow. I left the day wow. before the show came out and then I came back and visited. But I mean, 
now I see some of the like celebrity regulars at parties. I'm like, huh. Huh. Oh my god! I know your order. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're yeah, having I was to doing drink. that. The first time I got recognized was at a party I was working at. Really? Mm-hmm. It was at a rave. I was bartending. You were bartending at a say rave. To you? <laughs> <laughs> I was bartending at Mayan Warrior. Um, she came up. She was very drunk. She's like, "You look like someone, but I don't know who." It's like, okay. She left. She comes back with a friend. She's like. You look like the girl from that show, Gen Z. Have you seen it? I'm like, Gen V? Mm. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You look like her. And I was so uncomfortable because the whole time before this, I'd been like, I've never been recognized. I'm so, oh, I'm, I was so sad. I was like, everyone else has been recognized but me. No. Um, so stupid. And she's like, yeah, you look like that girl. I was like, cool. And her friend was much more sober. And she's like, have you seen the show? I'm like, yeah, I've seen the show. She's like, yeah, you look like her. And I'm making a drink. And she's, she goes, are you her? (laughs) Yeah. And then she asked me some very way too personal questions. But she, um, but that was the first time that that happened. That happened again the next night that I was working at the rave. And it was amazing because it was rave people. They're so (laughs) happy. It was a good vibe. They were so happy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and it was this really sweet group of people. It took so long for them to realize what was happening. Because they're like, oh my God, you look like this girl. They pulled up my picture. They're like, her stage name is London Thor. I'm like, crazy. <laughs> my name's London. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's insane. And I like, tapped the bartender next to me. I'm like, look who they think I look like. And he, they held up the picture. And he's like, well, you do look like her. I'm like, I am her. <laughs> he's like, and we have the same first name. <laughs> And last and name. Face. And they're like different last name though, right? I'm like, nope. <laughs> Took so long because they're on drugs. Yeah. And then they finally realized it and they're so sweet. Chatted with her, with her on Instagram for a while. <laughs> but it, I've been I I've been wanting to work. Like it's yeah. it doesn't feel I still get to I still write. I still take classes. I still do all the stuff that I want to do. I don't feel like I'm stealing my time. Yeah. Mm. But I also A, it keeps me a, a little grounded, I guess. And I also love bartending. I think it's fun. That's nice. Um, Just that you do it. Yeah, I don't like At a rave. I'm teaching. I'm still teaching. I'm teaching music. That's amazing. Yeah. That's my at school of rock. Are oh you God, really? That's yeah. so cute. Which one? Woodland Hills. <gasps> Why didn't you Why tell me that? that? I swear I did. Here. You did not tell me that. I just started. Well, now we're, now <laughs> we're like going to be new. moving. I know. But oh, yeah, I love, wow. I, I like staying and doing something else. I like doing other things. That That's so healthy for your brain. Yeah. yeah. Sitting sh- around waiting is a nightmare. Mm-mm. You can't do that. Mm-mm. No. no. No, I don't want to. I, I, I'm going to have to do something else. Like I'm going to have to do something. When do you guys go back? Mm, I really don't know. But you got picked up again. We got picked up. We got picked up before the show ended, which was great. Wahoo. Amazing. Yeah. I know it got. Like, I have this that as... Wahoo girl energy. Yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> you do. do. But you're a subtle extrovert. You're like a nice, oh, warm extrovert. Subtle extrovert. Subtle extrovert. Subtle extrovert. Well, because you said it the other day. You're like, I'm so extroverted, and I was like, I, am, I don't know. I would you should see her after that. she drinks one of those energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we have video. We do. But you are. You're extroverted. Yeah, I like people. You she do. Does. I do. I like. I them do a lot. too. Um. I do. <laughs> I find them very interesting. I find people fascinating. Yeah. Uh-huh. You have uh-huh. to love people. Yeah. Yes. You can't be an actor and not love people. Yeah. That would be hard. Yeah. You judge every character you play. Right. But yeah. I just don't, I don't have the external yeah. energy. The first show I was I on. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Shameless. The director pulled me aside and he's like, Are you okay? Oh, oh really? Yeah. It was, it was so embarrassing. I Because I wasn't uh, excited. I didn't appear excited. I was having the best time. It was the greatest day of my life. I was on a Warner Brothers set for the first time. like Filming Shameless. I was so excited yeah. inside. But my face didn't register. And he pulled me aside. He's like, hey, are you like, are you having a good time? It's like Rob. No enthusiasm. Well, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, like, I that, love it. That stung. That's one of the things I am insecure about is Aww. wanting to be... To show what you're feeling inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind it. 
I mean, I can't do anything about it. So I it's not going to. Because I feel no, like but when everyone you has do. A different personality. Yeah. You know, and they just show it different ways. And I'm yeah. sure if you were on that show for a long time, they get to know you and that's just your personality. Well, the cast knows me now. Like, it's a running joke of like, don't touch me. Like, right. I'm not a hugger. I, I like hugging. I just don't. It's not my f- greeting. I don't go. I'm like, hi. <laughs> I always hug you. Um, yeah, I like hugging people I know. Oh, I hugged you. Hello. Yeah, I yeah, I, I opened my arms to it. I was ready, but like, <laughs> I don't. Like my mom doesn't hug. I don't. She's not a hugger. You uh, always question: Do I hug her or not hug her? But I'll hug her. She hugs well, me. You know. Yeah, Carson hugs her. He used to when he first knew her, and I was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> don't yeah. do that. Don't hug my mom." Um, but you have to go off of her. Her mom's got boundaries. Like mm-hmm. she's not someone like. It is that thing where it's like they're very protective with their energy Mm -hmm. and you have to read her and you can tell like, I remember when I first met her, I was really intimidated by her. Really? Yes. When I first met her, because like I first met her and she said some, like, Bernice's like, yeah, she was in Cameron's class. And she's like, no, she wasn't. Mm -hmm. She would have to go through me first. And Bernice's like, no, she was in Cameron's class. And she just looked at me and she's like, no, she wasn't. Yeah. And I was like, I was. Oh, you were? I was. I was. Oh, yeah. But like for some reason, I didn't go to Alice first because everyone went through Alice mm-hmm. to get to Cameron. Mm-hmm. And I didn't do that because of the way the classes were structured or mm-hmm. something. And so she was just like, I don't know her. But she wasn't like, yeah. She wasn't like, oh, hi. I don't she, know you. Yeah. She's she really like, puts I, it on you. She really puts, yeah. that's one, it's kind of a superpower. It's terrifying. It's, <laughs> She really puts it on you to, y- you can take her, she'll say the words and then it's up to you to decide if you're offended by those words. Mm. Yeah. Didn't mean anything by it, genuinely. And she doesn't, she doesn't mean anything by it, but. No, it was neutral. But it really but to me, shines, it, wasn't. it holds a mirror to you to be like, if someone could get very uh, upset about that, like, well, yes, I was. Right. And really defensive, and that shows you a lot about that person. Right. Well, or I ended or up going emotional, to her for my teacher your, after that. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's there's something like about you. her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's known now, like my castmates know that I'm not gonna be like, don't I don't want a group hug. Don't I'm not a jump hugger. I don't do that. Um <laughs> I don't it react that way. It's you know, I like I'm cuddly and warm sometimes when I wanna be. When mm-hmm. I'm when I with I, your husband and your dogs. No, and with like with, with people. Derek, like yeah. I love Derek, and I do love the like. I don't know. It's mostly it's oddly women, hmm. for some reason. Interesting. Yeah, probably because my mom's probably because yeah. your mom. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because yeah. um, I love women, but it's not. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's easier for me to be cuddly with guys. I get that because of I the intimacy, that. probably. Yeah, I and mean, it's easier to shut my intimacy off with guys. You're more Women, playful I feel, with guys, too. Mm-hmm. Like you're, I feel stronger with guys. <laughs> she's like the, the, I don't know what the word for it is, because this is, not I don't know if this is even a word anymore, but like you have tomboy vibes. Yeah. Like when she's with all mm-hmm. the guys, it's like she can Bro be. down. She, I'm not like the other girls. She's not like the other girls. Right. She serves them I'm shit. She's 100% like. 100% kidding about that comment. <laughs> That's not, I, it's horrible. Um, it's true. I'm like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Huh? But she's just like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She's like one. She can be like one of the dudes. Well, I feel I feel a lot more confident with men. I think because I f- feel like I know how to be around men more mm-hmm. than I know how to be around women. I think women, I get yeah. more. I want to res- not that I don't want to respect men, but I want to respect women a lot. I guess I don't know what I'm trying to say. I think it's your mom. She's got that, it's for sure. She's my got mom. that queen energy. Yeah. You I know? like to step back with women. I like to be like, okay, I'm going to let you do your thing and I don't know you and I'm going to give you space. And I think I'm a little more careful. I'm a little more tiptoey because I know what it's like <laughs> right. to be a girl right? and to feel feelings. Um, but men, it's easier for me to be cuddly with because it's more comfortable. It's less, in- it's less intimate. So interesting. Yeah. It is so interesting. Everything yeah. about you is so interesting, mm-hmm. you know? Thanks. And the whole conversation, the whole ride you're on and that you've been on your whole life, it sounds like, you know, and being so sure of who you are and it's really admirable. And now, you know, you have this 
beautiful, big thing and success and you're still you. And I just, but I appreciate how refreshingly open and transparent you were during this conversation and how you are, I think, in life. No, I feel like I talked a lot. This is why you're here. You came for (laughs) Yeah. Imagine if you didn't. I talked more you did. But I have Olivia and like people like that to be able to, like I know if I ever started being a dick. Yeah. You'd be like, stop. Yeah. Don't be an asshole. Don't. Don't be an asshole. Keep it humble. Yeah. Keep it humble. Yeah. I don't know. Gratitude. Yeah. I don't think, I don't, I hope I never have to struggle with that. I don't. I don't. I, think, I might. It might come about. Maybe my ego will get inflated at some point. It, but it skips people. We never had to do that with Rachel. Mm. I had to do it with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can tell her when, don't be a dick. But mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. She never. No, I never. Yeah. She never, like. But I think it has, you know, coming up, like, with the support from your mom yeah. and everything. Like, I had the same thing with my mm-hmm. parents. You know, just having that, What's I your think. sign, too? Virgo. I knew it. You did? did? Yeah, did. What are you? I'm Aquarius, but Virgo rising. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do you, you know I was a Virgo? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I feel it. What's you, yours again? Libra. Libra. I don't know a lot about Libra. I don't know a lot about things that aren't my sign, unfortunately. I don't know anything about any of the signs, really. I do. I know you do. <laughs> Shepherds and Aquarius. I know. Oh. It makes me really happy. Yeah. Well, Shep. What is Elliot's a Libra? Libra. Yeah. Jeff's a Virgo. 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 Yeah. My new heard about him and I. My yeah. my, Patico. my two Patico. My husband and wife are yeah. both Virgos. The yeah. Same. There's yeah. something deeply like unsettling about ego for me. And I don't know if that has to do with oh. I mean everything has to do with astrology. Not to be that person, but it's No, but I mean it does. In in some way, shape or form. But yeah, there's something that just doesn't feel quite right mm. about it. About Astrology? About, no, about ego, about like having oh god, yeah, like confidence, horrible. confidence and courage and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's stuff you work on. But I don't know. I've never there's n- it's there's no part of me that feels better than other people. <laughs> like, well, the ego works in both. Ways. I also don't find that interest. Like, I don't find that important at all. Yeah, to be better, worse than other people. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. I'm going to cling to that. Yeah, cling to that. Cling to that. Cling to that. We have a great astrologer if you ever want one. Oh, who? Mm -hmm. Candy. Candy. We can give you her information. We can give you her information. I have a great tarot person if you want one. We do. We love this shit. He's amazing. Love it. My mom reads tarot. Yeah. And she is amazing. She is amazing. You know what? We're all fucking amazing. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Now let's go cut your um, cranberry bars. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just had to leave you feeling awkward for a second. <laughs> Thank you. Let's cut your cranberry Aww. bars. Let's do it. Thank you, guys. Oh, Thank London. you so much. Thank you, so babe. Welcome to Broad Ideas. I'm Rob. I'm Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Rob thought it would be hilarious if we swapped. Switched outfits. <laughs> Pants and everything. Yeah. And cups. Up. I mean, you're blowing on your little tea like Rachel. <laughs> like a yeah. granny. I yeah. love it. So I'm drinking tea right now. Did you guys switch socks? Everything. <gasps> you would be really excited if you switched socks with me because they're very soft. <laughs> Those look Even soft. more so soft my shoes. What? It's a pretty, it's soft, pretty sweater. soft sweater, right? Yeah. This is not so soft. That's but it pretty, smells good. I nice was going to say, can, can you smell? Does he smell good? You know, and he sprayed um, Sandal or whatever, Lolabo, mm. you know, that smell. Yeah. And it, right when I put it on, I was like, oh, did you spray Lolabo today? And Natalie got it for him for Christmas. No. Mm. That's the only scent on a guy that's like tolerable. I hate cologne. You do? Oh my God, absolutely. <gasps> I hate it. I think it's disgusting. I love when a guy smells a certain way. I like the smell of sweat and deodorant. I remember in high school, mm. my boyfriend. Love, like oh, deodorant. Yeah. Like I, I don't mind if I'm like into a guy, I don't mind the body odor. I don't like body odor. Well, I like yeah, the, you. I like the smell of actual deodorant. Right. Like Old Spice. It's the best. I know what you mean. So in like, high school. Like Axe body spray? Uh, no. No. I remember jupe. There was like a cologne called jupe. Do you remember yeah. jupe? Yeah. And I, I like bought it so I could like spray it on things that smelled like the guy I liked. You you like <laughs> cologne. You like I, cologne on a guy? I like a guy's smell. 
Well, but I'm that's, saying if they do wear a cologne, like that smells, one I'm good with. You know, smells, music, like all of that, it, it just, you know, takes you there. Yeah, but like it got to a certain point where it was like, ooh, you could, like if a guy walks by and mm-hmm. smells like cologne, I find that really weird. Well, if it's too strong, sure. Yeah. Same with no, perfume. Right. I don't like perfume. I wear a you, little bit of perfume. Sensitive you don't really wear perfume. Like you don't have like a smell. I can't yeah, I think do. of a perfume and think yeah, it's I, you. I wear perfume. But like I don't ever notice it. That's good. But That's if you, you were to like And they say if you can't smell it on you, it's, it's the right good. smell for you. So but like if you were to like nuzzle into me, mm-hmm. you'd probably be able to smell it. I don't Let's like Let's nuzzle. I don't like like my friend Jennifer. Yeah. Our friend Jennifer. Yeah. Whenever she gets in the car, I'm like, Jennifer. No, I can't handle overbearing perfume in a car. It makes me gag. Well, Natalie's had to tell our nanny to stop wearing so much perfume. Really? Yeah. I've felt like this is a real story. Well, she's she's a a little hypersensitive to smells. Yeah, my mom's that way. She can't have perfume candles. I'm that way around like smells I don't like. Right. If it's smell I like or neutral, like I'm I'm fairly okay. I don't like someone walking in the room and smelling like anything. Hmm. Depends I, on the person. I think I'm with you. Depends on. I feel on, like it's kind of an aggressive thing to do. I feel like, like I, I'm going to take up this space with my smell. Your nose space. Right. We don't all like the same smells. No. But I right. like a dude's smell if I like the dude. I, me too. I like their deodorant. I don't mind like body odor on the guy. Like even if it doesn't have deodorant, if it's just him. Just yeah. like stinky? Like their stink, once I like a guy, doesn't bother me. Even if it's bad smell, I don't like bo. Yeah, like bot, like b. Yeah, bo smell. Yeah, I don't know. I I it, find I, like what? the natural male smell maybe, but it's yeah. Like, if it's like they just ran four miles and stink, sweaty. You balls. like that? Oof, <laughs> oof, oof. Um, no, I mean I don't know. I'll get back to me on that, and the next time I smell an armpit of a guy like that ran four miles, I'll report back. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let me know. Do you like musty shorts? Excuse me? I don't know. You just yeah. seem like really into people. Into into, <laughs> into rank body smell. Yeah, you seem to musty like. Musty shorts? Yeah, though, must, just like, like that description is very uncomfortable. It's like, like what do guys sweaty, do in shorts? Yeah, they, it's, you're smelling their sweaty balls. Sweaty shit. Yeah. Sweaty balls. You guys. probably never smelled sweaty balls, have you? I have sweaty <laughs> <laughs> Have you? I mean, I've had I'm not someone else's. <laughs> right, you've smelled your own sweaty sure. balls. <laughs> you've like it has like a smell that you notice. Like, it's oh, musty. it's a little sweaty it's all balls. Musty, <laughs> sure. Yeah, a shower. Yeah, but what I mean is, it is after your Pelotons. Oh, um, oh, must must. <laughs> I like that he really is no, thinking not, about it. I don't it. think it's. I don't think it's that. I don't think I. I don't think it's that bad. Or maybe maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Wait, yeah, Jeff's never smelled? But sometimes on the, uh, like, if we're going to go to dinner, uh, I can just, like, change, throw on deodorant and not have to shower. Yeah. He doesn't, like, he doesn't have B.O. Mm. Like, he'll have a scent with, mm-hmm. like, the deodorant. Mm-hmm. But there's never, like, he doesn't have B.O., which is really weird. Because he sweats. He'll, like, pit. Mm-hmm. But there's no, like. What sweatshirt are you wearing? Every time. I used to ask every time. Every single time. Because it's, like, such a good one. Yeah, I got it at a flea market. Yeah. It's just like cozy. Yeah, it's annoying. Okay. Every time I wear this one, she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's this. I'm jealous of it. Oh, but you have a very nice sweater on today. I don't know <laughs> why you're, you'd be jealous of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Best sweater I've ever put on my body. <laughs> oh, Rob, I wanted to show you something. Someone sent us a DM. It has nothing to do with you. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I don't want you to get alarmed. But someone sent a DM of an older lady and said, (laughs) (laughs) This killed me. Wait, where is is it? it? Did Rob send it? (laughs) Was it from Rob? (laughs) I mean, maybe. She sent it to us and said, This looks like a future version of Olivia if she decided to get super into power tools. And it was a day after you sent me a picture of an older lady on the side of the street. <laughs> and I'm like, is everyone trying to tell me something? I did think the side of the street lady, I did have to like zoom in and look if it was you or Nicole. 
It was not at all about the age of this no, woman. No, she wasn't. It was, she what was, was dressed it? like She wasn't you. an old lady. She, she had a lot like of a, layers on. Yeah, she had like a hat on. It looked like something you would wear. Yeah, it and she was about a lot of layered person. <laughs> and she was about your size. Like to me, it looked like an old lady checking her phone with her glasses, <laughs> holding her phone out. Well, that's also what you do. Look how big your phone is on here. While walking her dog. <laughs> This does look like you. Outfit. It looks like a very wrinkly version of you. She, I mean, I just think it's hilarious. The like two, if she got into power she's tools. Like, this looks like Olivia if she decided to get super into power tools. <laughs> I'm going to pull up that photo of you. You had to zoom in to see if it was me or Nicole? It was the outfit. Yeah, Do the I outfit. wear she's a wearing, lot of yeah, layers? You're wearing, well, no, she's wearing a hat like you with sunglasses. And you can't even tell if this lady's older. No, I have no idea what age she is. Yeah, there's no it way. It was like the, just like it was a vibe. This looks, this, this is a photo of you. <laughs> I guess I don't um, know myself very well. She's got like a little button nose too. Yeah, and she's cute. It wasn't an insult. I felt like it was an insult. I didn't take it as I an insult. I thought Rob was like, look, Olivia, are you this old lady? Uh-uh. And then someone else was like, look, Olivia is an old lady. And then Rachel was like, yeah, they both look like you, Olivia. <laughs> no, this looks like a cozy, Not. nice lady walking her dog. And Do I look like a cozy, nice lady? I, you know what? Give it away from me. I'm like, there's no way she'd be walking strawberry. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I was like, besides the dog, part, <laughs> she wouldn't be holding a bag of shit. No. 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 Does Strawberry get walked ever? Every single day. Oh, David takes her on walk. Yeah. Oh. Every day. Great. That's his dog. How's uh, life with David going? <laughs> like our segment, Life with David. Yes. We got in a fight today, but it looks like he might have gotten a job. That's huge. It's gargantuous. It's really a big deal. It's a huge deal. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. Is it far? Yes, but How my mom's going to get him a car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. This is all great. So this is what I tried to, like, not explain to him, but he's been sober since he got out of jail and been living with us, right? That's been, like, 10 months or something is like it that. 10 months? Yeah. Is the job allowing him to move out? I don't know yet. We don't really know what it's going to look like because we call him Captain Vague hmm. because he's um, really – Opposed to details. Got it. Doesn't like them. Got it. But so this came through. Oh, did I tell you about this? I don't know. Alana's oh, yeah, yeah. fiance, my my friend's fiance was like, What is your brother into? And I was like, he's really into bodybuilding. He wants and to be a trainer tools. and power tools. And he said, I will call my friend who owns a gym. And he went in there. And I was proud of David because the guy called him to have an interview. And my brother was like, Listen, man. This is my life. This is all I care about. Please just let me meet you face to face so that you can actually get an idea of who I am. And I was like, good for you, mm-hmm. advocating for yourself. Mm-hmm. So then like he you. went there and he liked, he was like, I heard the clinking. I looked around, like they're building, bodybuilding, blah, blah, blah. And he said to the owner, he was like, you're going to have to find something for me because I'm not leaving. <laughs> and he was like, come back tomorrow. And I was like, wow, we should do that. I was just thinking, like, it actually reminds me of you a little bit show mentality wise. And be like, you're coming on the podcast and we're not leaving <laughs> until we have an interview. Okay, so he has his job and today was his first day? He's been there three days in a row. <gasps> What's he doing there? What time to what time? He said, just go, come in and get acquainted with the machinery and machinery. Is that just what working out. Equipment? What's uh, it's working out? What are his hours? I think it's going to be eight to three. Great. It's amazing. If you want to visit him, do you want to give like a shout out to the gym? And I would love to give a shout out to the gym after I make sure he actually has a job. <laughs> then I will be shouting it from the rooftop. He doesn't have, officially have a job. I don't know. He oh, says he has a job, yeah. but he's so. Captain Vague. Vague. How do you feel about vagueness yeah. in general? Do you think it's a guy more leans towards I, if we were going to generalize, yeah, yeah. Mo, I would say men typically are vague. I'm not that way. But how are you about talking about your feelings and emotions? Mm, depends on who it's with. Like, do you express, like, if you miss Natalie or, like, what, you know, do you express those things? No. What? What? 
What do you, Why? What do you what mean? Do you do? Are you like actions? Like you show her? or like, He's her like, I her. never miss her. I live with her. <laughs> it's hard yeah. to miss someone when you live with them. I know. Yeah, but not- you know what I mean. So just walk us through <laughs> how you show your feelings Wait, so to your would, wife. Yeah. Would you feel it and then not express it? Or do no, you I just would, not feel it? I would it? say it. We're, we're together all the time. So yeah, there's not a... But like the I love yous, like whatever... <laughs> I mean, the sweater and the mug are <laughs> no. killing me, Larry. But so do you like say I love you all the time? Like what's we, that? Yeah, we do. Yeah. You know what you're being right now? <laughs> vague. Fucking vague. <laughs> Let's say we're like overly affectionate with Calvin <laughs> and, and Vincent <laughs> where we'll say it a lot. And then I think it got annoying to the point where he wants to just say it all the time. So now we've kind of... Reel the back a little bit. Right. We're not talking about that. I know. We're talking about what I'm saying. That's blood over into our interactions as well. Do you say I love you every time you hang up the phone? No. Do you? We don't talk on the phone though. I say I love you every time I hang up the phone with you. Oh, I know. Yeah. But I'm, you know. That's That's an LA thing. That's what I heard. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Jeff was like, you guys are so weird. Like, how often are you guys on the phone? Her and Jeff? Yeah. A All lot. the time. He calls yeah. her for everything. Yeah, we don't, we're, he's not, we big. barely, oh, no, Jeff is not big. <laughs> we barely have phone calls with each other. What? Huh. What, the, what, the, what about when you go away? Like you'll go out of town. It's usually like a busy one that's happening. Yeah, but I will fa- do you check I mean, in with her or you yeah, just FaceTime we'll te- the kids? Yeah, text and then we'll yeah, FaceTime the what kids. What do you text? Like, I love you. How are things at home? Like, is it like that? Okay, no. He's like, no. <laughs> no it's more like an more operation. like logistical. Yeah. See? Yeah. But I mean, yeah, if something's going are. on, we'll, we'll be conversational about it. It's not like only logistical. Will you ever text her things like, I just want you to know I love you so much. You're my <laughs> I whole just, heart. I just want your <laughs> vagina. No. 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 Yeah. Have you ever expressed in that way? Maybe like early on in the relationship. Like, I love you. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yada, yada. <laughs> uh, probably not. No. Hmm. Does Jeff say those things to you? All the time. Oh. Yeah. He just, sounds cheesy to me, though. He's, and I think he's just would, so would, not would... cheesy, though. He's sentimental. But <laughs> he's very sentimental. Oh, yeah. Like and genuine. Like last night we were going to sleep and he's like, Olivia... Elliot, like this was different because it was the kids. He's like, I want you to know you guys are my whole entire heart. Aww. And like, he'll text me, I love you so much. You're my heart. Like, he'll really like. I love that. He's very sentimental. And yeah. Yeah. I love he does that of a affirmation, lot. guys. <laughs> but it's not cheesy. No, it's genuine. It's genuine. Because I know he's not going to do it unless he's genuinely in that moment feeling like that. Mm-hmm. He doesn't yeah. always come with that. I don't no. think. I think Natalie would also find it cheesy, though, too. Well, you want me to send her one yes. right now and see yes. what she? Yes, yeah, she'll be like, is. "What's wrong with so you?" So what am I? She's gonna be saying? like, "Are you just say I? I love you? I want you to know you are my whole entire heart. <laughs> just say I want you to know you are my life. Yeah, <laughs> no, you and the boys. Both- I want you to know you and the boys are my life. She's like, "Are no, you she's dying? Gonna think I'm dying?" Yeah, she's gonna think I'm in like an accident. <laughs> see, yeah, no, I I'm get- not gonna. No. <laughs> well, say something. <laughs> just randomly text her, I love you. See what she does. Well, yeah, does. she'll say I back. But is that that's a rarity? Not, that's not, no, that's not that rare. If, and if, like, she's going to bed and I'm doing something and You'll we're text not her, home, I love you? Yeah, she'll say it before bed. Oh, I have something to talk about. Mm-hmm. So Rachel and I went to dinner the other night and there was five of us, right? We went to Houston's, which apparently is like a really big deal. Hot ticket. Hot ticket. So we went early birds. We got there at like what? Five, five 30, something like crazy early. Well, they don't take reservations for more than four people up to, so it's like the opposite of other restaurants, you know? So they take it for less than four people? Yeah, four Four and under, which is so strange. So we had a weird experience because we were really enjoying ourselves, like there with our girlfriends, having the time of our lives And the chef comes over. He's like, hey, ladies, so glad you're enjoying. I'm going to have to ask you, this table is reserved for parties of five, and you guys have been here a long time. Would you mind taking your party to the bar bar or the patio? 
So basically, we got kicked out. Okay. How long had you been there? <laughs> Three hours. Three hours. Yeah. Okay. So you think that's fine? Yeah, they're flipping tables and they got reservations. Yeah. No, nope, they don't have reservations. Well, for they five. can't take reservations <laughs> for five on that. So you wouldn't be annoyed or upset or offended if someone came and asked you to leave. No, only because I've been on the opposite of that, where like. That's true. I've had a reservation and this table's taking forever. They've got their check. It's not a reservation like, wait. thing, though. Well, I know, but it's the same. Yeah, people are principle. waiting. People I get are waiting. That. I, I do. And if they've just, got a ton of people I starting to pile so up there. I was so sensitive. I was like, I'm never going to, I can't come back here. Oh my God, we wait, we, we were at the table too long. And, and like, I started like the people it was pleaser thing. sensitive thing. The Rachel chef, was like never coming back because like, she felt so mortified and embarrassed. embarrassed. And she thinks there's going to be like a photo of her on the wall. And, and then seat her. And then our friend Nicole pulled us aside and was like, hey guys, I got to <laughs> tell you something. I've got intel on this place. And we we're like, what? <laughs> yeah. And Nicole she was, Chavez? Yeah. She, Holly she was like, she was like, this place loves a rule. And we're like, what? She's well, yeah, like, I've, they've made me take my hat off. I went there with Calvin. Oh, for yeah, lunch. yeah, yeah. yeah. Not like, allowed. There's a dress to, code. I was like, what? There's a dress code. But the way she said it, I thought we were going to learn something really, like, <laughs> life-changing. But she was just like, they love a rule. <laughs> well, it's, I know what she's talking about. It's because yeah. um, their friend Jess works there. Yeah. Yeah. Is he working? No. No. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But it was really, it was something. It was an experience. It was hard. And for, Emily and I both were like yeah. mortified. Yeah. Three hours is a long time. It is. I was fine with it, to be honest. I, I was like, like really, I get yeah. it. But I get it too. I just have, you know, it's like that whole like rule follower, people pleaser. Yeah. Like if I get in trouble, I don't like it. Briars like that too. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. So this girl loves a rule. I do. I follow rules like parking illegally. Like my foot, you know, my foot is fucked up yeah. for two months. We go on this birthday hike and like the whole lot's full. And the only place to park is like a legitimate like five minute walk uphill. Or a handicap spot. I'm sorry. Can we stop this conversation for a second? What? Your foot's fucked up and you went on a birthday hike? I had to. Can I explain? A hike you with want me your to foot? Yes. And while I'm in the boot, which I had to take off because it, Honestly, I think it's made it worse and it's really annoying to wear. I had to go on a hike, not only a hike, but this is like a rigid, like narrow climbing over rocks, had crossing you river. You didn't have to. I had to. Briar had two birthday parties. That was the first one at 10 a.m. I couldn't ask one of the moms to be all the way into the hike, be like, hey, can you walk her all the way back out to me? Well, then you just don't and go. Then go then back. You just don't go if you have party. a broken foot. I know, but she really wanted to go. Or you send Bella with her, or you send someone else. And we with had to her. go directly to Winnie's, though, like from there. You in send Silmar. a representative for yourself. I'm just concerned about your foot. I'm and, like, concerned you too, but I. You on it like that. I had to, though. You know, you would have done it too. No, I that's how have. we do. No, no. Anyways, you're more. Not the point you're of more story. of a walker on the foot type of gal. I just don't, I just, I just keep going. And you walk uphill because that's where you got to park. Yeah, so I had to park. I didn't break a rule was the point of the story. I forgot what the point She didn't even illegally. break the rule sure. of, of not being able to go to the kid's party. Oh, well, she really didn't want to miss it. It was like a fun party and they all got like, it was like a Jumanji party and they had like all this equipment to like go and find that's Jewel fun. and like. You know, and they person got personalized things, fanny packs with the names they picked. Like, I'm just worried about your foot. I'm worried about my foot too. Anyway, so point of the story is, I could have parked illegally and been right by the trailhead, and I instead. <laughs> well, yeah, but that you need a ticket or yeah. car towed. Like, yeah, I'm with you there. You would have just parked. No, no, she wouldn't yeah. be no. there. No, no, no. Some people do that. I'm not like I need to. F I mean, I follow the rules. My daughter also like yesterday we could have jaywalked like right across to the car, but she's like, "Mom, we're walking to the crosswalk." I'm like, "You're right." Oh yeah, no, I'm a. J I will jaywalk. Yeah, I feel like that has been less. Of, it's like been lessened as a crime or a ticket or whatever. Has it? Maybe that's a rumor. I purposely did not jaywalk today because we were at Sh Shepherd and Elliot School, mm -hmm. and I was like, "You can't jaywalk in front of a school." 
I was like, I'm just an a-hole. Yeah, you can't do do that. Mm -mm. But I had to stop myself and be like, reverse No, you have to. We always go to the crosswalk. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I jaywalk all the time. That's an L.A. thing, though. Jaywalking? Jaywalking? Not jaywalking. Not what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in Chicago, you just jaywalk. Jaywalk. Like New York. Yeah, Yeah, New York. I don't pay attention. In New York, it's fine to just go. How is your foot? It is not good, Olivia. This is why I don't want you going on hikes. (laughs) Yeah, I had a cane. It's like her mom. They're like, don't worry, I'll keep going. Like, it's like this thing. Keep on trucking. Yeah. Am I right? (laughs) Well, Olivia the other day was like, I would be complaining, and she would. Olivia does not do well with ailments. No. (laughs) Sure I'm more of like, eh, what are you going to do? Yeah, I would be really, really I do miss tennis. milking that. Oh, I miss my tennis lesson. Oh, I wonder if it's from tennis. I think it's like, from an Ugg boot. I told you. An Ugg shoe. <laughs> I just how I'm waiting for my wearing? MRI, guys. I will, I will let you know once I have the results, once I get the MRI, which will take a long time. Okay, Rob, what's our question? All right. I'm a 26-year-old female. I've been with my boyfriend, 27. Male for about eight months. Things have been quite challenging because we are in a long distance relationship, but we love the time we spend together and have plans to hopefully close the distance after he comes back from his one year of deployment starting in March. (laughs) (laughs) Gets better. Don't worry. Okay, go. (laughs) We both want to stay together um, throughout this and are making plans for the future. We Actually, used to date in high school as well, but we were not ready for serious relationships. We went our separate ways in the meantime. I have a baby daddy who I have a four-year-old kid with. How old is she? Uh, 26 years old. Okay. I have a baby daddy who I have a four-year-old kid with who I separated from three years ago. It's been up and down since because of his mental health issues, but our co-parenting has been going fairly well. He recently spiraled with his mental health and at some point ended up breaking up with his own girlfriend. And after that, he it's good also... good to break up with someone else's yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> he also met my current boyfriend a month ago. Last night, he came to me with a confession that he wants us to try again and be a family. Oof. There was no right time and place to have this discussion. I was literally holding my kid crying at the time. Oof. I have no interest in doing this and want to only be co-parents. I don't know why he brought this up and why he thought it was a good idea. Uh, I think it's another one of his mental health phases, and he's feeling lonely since he left his girlfriend. I'm divided on whether I should tell my current boyfriend about this interaction. Nope. He knows my baby daddy and his family regularly cause issues, but with him leaving unemployment, things are already challenging as they are, and I don't want him to think there's someone prying around trying to get on with his girlfriend. No, she absolutely does not bring it up, especially while he's far away. Not valuable uh, information. He's deployed. That's it. That's it. Yeah, no. Don't do it. You can't. Don't do it. You can't him. do it. But she also doesn't know what, what she has to tell the baby daddy. Tell, yeah, tell no. If she's not. No, interested. you do not. There's certain things, like if someone's like far away and it's long distance, whatever, there's certain things that I don't think. Are helpful. Yeah, to be brought up, especially when someone's so far. Exactly. Especially if the person's clear on it. If they right. were confused about it right. and were considering it, then you might want to give the guy a heads up. But if it's clarity, you're like, it's not valuable information. And they have to deal with this guy for the rest of right. uh-huh. their life because they share a child. So uh-huh. I wouldn't. Yeah, I agree completely. Poisoning the well. Mm. Putting the worm in the apple. Come on, Rachel. Come with more. Putting the shit in the diaper. <laughs> Remember when we got really into um, underoos? Catchphrases? <laughs> <laughs> underoos? Yeah, when Cameron Diaz worn them in oh, Charlie's yes. Angels, we all wore them. Yeah, that was cute. Yeah. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, it was so cute. That was a moment. We were all wearing that? Yeah, it was. Yeah. We like legit bought underoos and wore them. It was really cute. What are underoos? Like What? Kids They're underwear. Little boys' underwear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Little kids' underwear, I should say. You never wore underoos? Like you didn't have underwear that had characters on it? Yeah. As Cartoon a kid. characters? Yeah. That's what they oh, are. You know, with the like yeah, the yeah. borders, a different sure. color. Yeah. 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 That's I'm what we're talking sure about. Calvin probably wears them now. He yeah. has. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. When does it switch to like boxer briefs? 
It's like a high school. Is it a high school thing? I, is it? I, have no I don't know. Idea. Do you still wear tidy whities Yeah. No, I have boxer briefs. Boxer Calvin's briefs? are kind of like boxer briefs. They're like in between. Wears too. <laughs> Interesting. Cool. Does Jeff wear tidy whities No. Oh, he wears like the boxer briefs. But I could see tidy whities being like comfortable. They can be cute on some people. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks for thanks everybody for listening. <laughs> Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Toodaloo. Yeah. Bye. Bye.